reports and comments, the selectmen will do their liaisons reports. We have public comment. The town manager, assistant town manager report. We'll have an open session for any topics that have not been anticipated. We don't have any proclamations, I assume, tonight. We will be having a hearing on the tax classifications for next year. Mystic Valley Elder Services. Are they going to be presenting this one? Yes, I believe so. None of us know. All right. <laughs> We've got um, a preview of the financial forum that's coming up next week. And um, we'll be previewing the January 15th special town event, as well as authorizing internal volume for the library. Um, and then we've got some approval of minutes. So I, um, let's go ahead and start with the liaison reports. Um, John? I actually have, don't have anything to report uh, this time. Okay, um, starting in chronological order, I attended the uh, Zoning Advisory Committee Public Forum, uh, which was held on uh, the changes to the zoning bylaw on 10-15. It was attended by a number of uh, the public, number of members of the public in town meeting. I thought the presentation was very clear and comprehensive, and uh, hopefully it will uh, help inform the, uh, the vote on the zoning changes coming up both in uh, November and in January. Uh, also, in John, you didn't take credit for this. I'll give it to you. Well, I knew you were ready to roll, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Everybody here at twice. On uh, October 22nd, attended the kickoff meeting of the Early Childhood Space Needs Committee, which uh, has uh, membership from the FinCom School Committee, Selectmen, and a number of uh, uh, other school employees associated with uh, elementary schools and preschool, and a number of people in the community who I thought had a number of insightful comments. Uh, I think the committee is looking at all options. There's, there's nothing off the table, on the table yet. I'm sensing uh, this is this is wide open for suggestion and new thinking, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm pleased to see that. So we'll be meeting again, I believe, on 11, 13. Uh, it's between the two town meetings here, the Wednesday night of that week, and we'll keep you informed. Um, also attended uh, with uh, John and Kevin the West Street Historical District meeting last night, which was uh, holding a hearing on the proposed Article 9. I thought it was, I'd like to compliment Ev for running a great meeting. I thought it was fair, fair balanced, very informative, we're all concerned. And uh, the board may want to consider taking a position on Article 9 tonight, and we promised we would discuss that uh, mm -hmm. at some point this evening. Okay. Yeah. That's all I have. Um, yeah, I actually, myself and John Arena attended um, the Arcasa World Cafe um, last weekend. Uh, actually, uh, Bob was there as well. Um, it, it was a, actually a, a, a very interesting night. I didn't expect to have so many different um, groups and folks from other towns. Um, you know, mm -hmm. So it was actually a pretty good, it was more of a district uh, kind of thing, um, which was nice to see uh, a lot of participation in there. There was probably about 70 to 80 folks that attended this uh, meeting, was held down um, at the field house, uh, down at the high school, and the, the topic uh, of discussion for the night was um, substance abuse, specifically opiate abuse. Mm -hmm. um, and it was uh, kind of, a, I guess you'd call it a, a round table. It was almost like speed dating. I, I kind of re re referred to it. <laughs> they, um, you know, uh, they had three main topics they wanted to discuss, and, and you'd switch tables each time you discussed it, which I thought was kind of fun. You, you sit down and, you, mm -hmm. and, you're, and you're talking with different folks and you're getting different perspectives on, on the ideas. Um, in general, what they were looking for was, uh, they had laid out a nice presentation. Um, well, I shouldn't say nice is, is the wrong term. They laid out a presentation. Um, certainly was eye-opening in some areas. Mm -hmm. and, and they, you know, generally had some discussion for these groups each time getting up and talking uh, with each other in regards to it. So um, it, it was, you can clearly see uh, our CASA is doing a, a great job, um, not only in this community, but also out, you know, stretching out past this community, which was nice to see. Um, and, and there seems to be a lot of enthusiasm um, from the folks that were in attendance there, you know, of, of really trying to, you know, whether it be come up with spearhead new ideas or whether it be preventative ideas, rehabilitation ideas, um, they seem to be doing a great job of addressing uh, the issue right now that, that I think uh, not just us but a lot of the towns that are surrounding us uh, seem to be up against as well. Um, 
And there was one other comment I just, I just had, and, and this is something I just wanted to bring up uh, to the board. It's something we can maybe put on for a future um, uh, topic to, to, for discussion, but I just wanted to approach it tonight. Um, a, lot, a lot of times uh, the citizens will send the selectmen uh, an email. Mm -hmm. um, part of our um, open meeting laws is, in, is such that we can't really respond as a whole group to this email to response right. to, the, to the public. I, what I wanted to maybe have the discussion about is maybe a way in the future, uh, of course, is maybe ways that we can be a little bit more um, maybe prompt and responsive. Maybe we are. But again, you may respond to them, and I don't know that um, if you do it solely. Or, or the town manager often is really responding to them, um, and we don't know that. You mm -hmm. know, so it, I, I just don't want to see any of these um, concerned citizens kind of get missed through the loop. Uh, you know, so mm -hmm. maybe just something we could talk about in the future. I, I don't know what the... Um, what the answer is, whether it be a roundabout, um, your turn, my turn, uh, her turn kind of thing, or, or some other method that we, we can do two things. We can respond one um, mm -hmm. in a quick and timely manner, to, even just to say, <laughs> we've gotten your, your inquiry, yeah, right. we'll certainly look into it and get mm -hmm. back to you. Right. Um, but more so, Bob probably gets more emails from me than, than anybody <laughs> <laughs> in which he's already addressed the topic. I'm like, oh, okay. Um, so mm -hmm. one thing I don't want to do is, is do that to Bob either right. or have right. that happen five times in yep. a row mm -hmm. um, where he's now addressing the th something sure. he's already addressed five maybe, times. Maybe, Bob, when you get those, you could blind CC us, which means I can't. That, you, can't. That, doesn't, no. you, that, that constitutes... It's serial oh, communicate if there's what? any deliberative but aspect. But the thing is, no. if, it's, if it's a BCC, then no one else will see if you respond back But to we Bob. all know that we got it. Yeah, I and, and that constitutes so. the problem. What I, what I do um, in the past past boards and past town manager kind of had an arrangement where um, the town manager would say this will be part of the next selectman's packet and then may or may not be able to respond right. with any information in between. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I've tried to answer as many questions right on the spot as I can. Mm -hmm. So if I, if I know the answer within mm -hmm. a few hours or a day, I, I send the answer and I copy John Arena, the chair. Mm -hmm. Now that doesn't help you four, right. but right. he, he, <laughs> at, he <laughs> at least knows and the person knows. Right. Uh -huh that there's an answer, but you guys are left hanging. Yeah. Um, if I don't know within that time frame, I might ask someone on the staff who can usually find out within a day. And if it's within a day, I figure I don't really need to answer the person generally yeah. yet. Um, mm -hmm. But if it's more than a day, then I'll generally shoot an answer like we're looking into it. Can, right. can we double check with council on that? Just because my okay. understanding of open meeting laws, there has to be de deliberation. And so sending information mm -hmm. one way is not deliberation. Sure. And so, if you, if what I'm no. proposing is, if you blind CC everybody, then there's no, uh, you you don't autom you know, n everybody else doesn't see if Certainly they respond back to you. Certainly, if we're trying to, to fix you. a meeting date and time, that's that's something you have to be able to do. Uh, but this is yeah. this is a little different than that, right? This is an actual yeah. issue, and maybe it's something for deliberation. Maybe it's yeah. not. I mean, there yeah. is no yeah. need to deliberate if it's just that you're ad addressing something. It would so it'd just be nice to know what. Well, at the very least, I could thought was I could on. do what I'm doing now, which is copy the chair, and then to all of you say I've answered. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that would be fine. And then right. You know, but you even at least know but that. If, it, if there's no harm in us knowing that I'll what the answer out. is. Okay, I'd like, like to. Have that, that would. That. I'd rather personally. I'd rather know what the answer was. Basically, what I've done is, I assume Bob is taking care of it, and so I don't actually. And, ask. and, and yeah. usually, well, I that's do, but not, not all. Right and and, and either, this is something I'm bringing up that uh, that's not a problem. Right. It's just something I see is, is, like I said, more than anything, to make sure that we get back to the resident mm -hmm. with with a response, whether it be an answer mm -hmm. or a we'll find that answer, yeah. mm -hmm. and also not to not to um, have Bob have to do it multiple times right. when he's right. already addressed Absolutely. it, which is just you know, just, just, just just a little bit inside, inside baseball for most people. <laughs> to, just to clarify, the open meeting law prohibits the deliberation of a quorum of the board right. outside of a normal posted meeting, and uh, serial communication by email is considered that kind of deliberation. So, and all the folks get this in the board committee commission training. Yeah. So we're we're trying to be I'll responsive ask. while still complying. Mm -hmm. Correct. Absolutely. And that is all I have. Okay, great. Um, uh, in terms of liaison reports, uh, the only thing is the zoning advisory committee where I gave the presentation mm -hmm. that Dan saw. So, <laughs> so.
It's not that. Um, and then Dan's the mouthpiece tonight. Dan's the mouthpiece for tonight. <laughs> the other thing is, though, I do. Um, I did ask John Arena just if he had anything he w wanted me to pass along, and he did have a statement about uh, the World Cafe, um, and he said oh, I attended the World Cafe sponsored by Senator Jason Lewis on Thursday, October 23rd, along with Kevin Sexton and Town Manager Bob Loyer, Deputy Chief Sagala, and Police Executive Officer Richard Robbins. The event was well attended by both Reading and Stone residents and law enforcement from both towns. Medical staff, mental health staff, and social workers were in attendance as well. The number of those directly affected by opiates is far greater than I would have otherwise known. The impact to their families and their social network is enormous. Reading has taken steps to educate our students with our CASA, but the threat of opiate addiction remains in place. So with that, um, I will move on to public comment. Do we have anybody here for public comment? Okay. Then I'll move it over to Bob. Um, just two things really quickly, and they're things you've already talked about. For all town meeting members who are sitting at home watching this, stop watching and rush right to the police station and get all your town meeting material <laughs> because it'll tell, take you well more than the time between now and town meeting to read it all. If you hold up the size of the oh, yeah. Can we hold that? Um, yeah. There is a tremendously comprehensive document for the zoning work that Marcy and many others have done. It's absolutely not necessary that you read through all that before you get to town meeting. Some of it is meant to be reference material at town meeting when a specific topic comes up. But I urge all town meeting members to pick up the warrant report in green and absolutely read that cover to cover at the very minimum. And, and please do not think you're going to wait until you get to town meeting to read this. It will right. be too late. Yes, it will. Please. <laughs> and uh, in very broad terms, just so the community gets a heads up on this, um, on the first night of town meeting, we are going to address Article 9 mm -hmm. because of some travel. Mm -hmm. And on the second night of town meeting, we're going to take up um, articles probably 7 and 8, both zoning. And the rest of the articles will fall as they may. So for anyone interested in the summer of discussion, that'll be the first Monday, which is the 10th. And then anyone interested in zoning, that'll be the 13th. And that may go on for several months. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that should be everyone that would be interested you in You would zoning. think. <laughs> They certainly care when they don't agree with it yeah. after the fact. <laughs> so. okay. Yeah, an, an enormous amount of work has gone in in zoning, and I can especially appreciate it uh, because I'm now working on the charter, which by comparison <laughs> is child's play. We'll get into that later tonight. But I, I want to echo some comments that many of the board members have made at, at the World Cafe and, and things we see day to day here. Um, there's a crying need in the community, both in the school community and the municipal government side of, of things for uh, social services help, I'll say. Um, whether it's substance abuse, whether it's emotional, whether it's psychological, um, it's an issue that is absolutely exploding. And I think partly driven by the real complexity of health care. No one knows where to go and what to do anymore. And I, and I will tell you the burden on both the schools and town government as the local resource is, is increasing tenfold. <coughs> and we're going to have to really struggle as we uh, go through the budget process of what is the role of local town government in this issue. Are we supposed to provide services for people? Are we supposed to point people to the services? Um, it's becoming a very complicated thing. Um, our CASA does a great job, um, but it's very important to keep in mind they don't provide services. They point people to the services. There's plenty of mm -hmm. health services that exist. Um, in the case of town government, we do both. We provide some services and we point people to some services. Um, you know, and you should start thinking now, even though it's you know months away from the budget season, of what is town government really meant to do? And it really is at the outset a philosophical question, I think, and then it later becomes a, a financial question. And the schools are faced with certainly many of the same issues. We're collaborating a lot better now uh, because we're often dealing with the same issues in the same families. We're just seeing different age brackets of some of the issues. So um, th there's a lot of people sort of, if you will, falling through the gap of state or federal help. And here we are doing the best we can. So that's all. I will have a lot of discussion on the uh, charter later. And I guess I'll just say on the, on the library project, uh, tomorrow's the big day. We open bids for the general contractors. Um, we should know by about 3 o'clock. Uh, how happy we are. Um, the subcontractor bids were open two weeks ago and went very well, so there's certainly no red flags or caution from that. The uh, temporary space is almost built out. The library will be open in the next week or two. Um, we'll certainly advise the newspaper when that happens. Uh, so things are working um, 
pretty well. But, you know, it is a, an 18 to 24 month construction project. I'm sure there'll be bumps in the roads. So everyone shouldn't think everything is going to be perfect along the way. But we have a good team. We'll, we'll do a good job. That's it. Okay. All right, um, Bob, we, um, we're, we're not posted for the hearing until 730. If you want to do Article 9 discussion next door, ask to be included. Mm -hmm. I can walk next door if you want to yeah, discuss that now. Yeah, yeah given the folks okay. are here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Here's Article 9. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what went into the report for town meeting, just so you see it, mm -hmm. is um, the Finance Committee obviously has no report, and then the Bylaw Committee recommended it. After quite a lengthy discussion, I would say it was mm -hmm. at least an hour, mm -hmm. uh, by a 4-0 to zero vote. And uh, there's nothing reported for any of the boards, including the select. Mm -hmm. So if you want to take a position, you're certainly welcome to, and you can just report it at town meeting. Mm -hmm. So um, I know that um, at the Historic Commission meeting. Uh, yes. West Street Historical. Yep. All three of them, all three. All three of mm -hmm. you were present. We actually, you know, had to call a meeting to order. Because <laughs> <laughs> we had so many right. people there. <laughs> My intention was to go also. Like I said, I got Sorry. pulled into an Asia meeting last night, so wasn't able to attend. So the, um, in general, it, it went well and- It went well. Good, as uh, there, go ahead. Uh, I, I guess I'm, I'm trying to lay out my own ground rules for when the board should take a position mm -hmm. on zoning and bylaw changes. And generally we don't do that. You, we have made one exception for the zoning already mm -hmm. since it's such a comprehensive uh, rewrite of our bylaws and, and it is important, I think, that the board weigh in on that and we have mm -hmm. done that. In this case, um, I will use another reason that I, I think it's, it's what I would co call a compelling public interest in the subject. Uh, it's probably been the most discussed topic in town, bar mm -hmm. none, for the last three months or more. Um, there are issues of equity for both sides, uh, and I think uh, having sat through last night's meeting, I think those issues are being fairly weighed, mm -hmm. and, and a lot of thought has gone into the development of this district. Um, there was clearly a lot of sentiment there for it. There was no opposition expressed. Uh, one of the concerns I had was, has every person really been given their say who's going into this district? And my, my understanding, Ev, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that uh, all butters or all people being included were uh, emailed or contacted, and I think all but one returned the email affirmatively. Is that correct? Uh, by email, all, okay. all but one, I think, returned that one, returned hard paper copy. Okay. Um, right. And as best I can say right now, all that returned by email, we know <coughs> they actually are. And I think all but two of them uh, responded positively. Mm -hmm. and those two were in favor of it. They just wanted to know the amount of work, or what it was, how the procedures were going to work. Right. Um, more, more. And that was fairly early, and I, I'm trying to look update that at this point uh, to see if I can find more recent information. But it's running well above 90% are in favor of it. Yes, all the abutters were notified. Uh, yep. We sent out, I can't remember how many letters, uh, we did a 300-foot. Oh, so the, the abutters to the new district. Right, yeah. and yeah. Uh, <coughs> they, were, they were notified uh, mm -hmm. for the um, for the public hearing last night. Uh, 
Um, we had a question and answer one a month or so earlier. Mm -hmm. All the people within the district were notified, but it was still an open meeting. Mm -hmm. And again, reasonably positive. Um, last sense was extremely positive. So it appears that the people have been notified. Um, I think there's been a fair pro-con discussion about what this might mean for, for the ease of making changes to their property, potential impacts pro up or down on property values. It sounds like that's been aired somewhat. It's yeah. been talked about and okay. basically um, it's also been, actually it's been tested. We've had nine years of running the same sort of rules on West Street mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. you know, some, some bumps in the road but nothing major. Um, and so we feel very positive about the fact that the number of um, applications and the number of times we've been through it have said that this should work. And obviously it's 26 more properties, and so it's an increase of almost about 40 to 50 percent. Um, so it would be a lot of work, but basically we see no reason why it shouldn't work. It has worked in the other place. And I think it's very important to realize that West Street has a lot of signs up there that are supporting it. They've been under it, and uh, so they we feel that's probably a better endorsement, if not equally. <coughs> Can you just describe the nature of some of those bumps in the road that you've talked about? Are they process related or are they related to something else? Um, they want to put up this type of roof and that type of roof isn't available anymore <laughs> and stuff like that. There's a lot of learning that goes on within the, um, within the uh, mm. discussion when somebody comes in with an application because they want to change their windows the window of the house is not 70 years old, so they can change their windows, but yet they listen to what would make a good choice. Uh, and so they, they want to reconsider what their, uh, what their options are. Uh, if they're more than 70 years old, the limitations become more obvious. We've had no, the bumps in the roads are just the fact that they don't want to do it. <laughs> you know, it's just a personal choice, I think, more than ever. The real bumps in the road. And that's only happened once since I've been in this video. What is it that they don't want to do? When you say that they don't want to do it. I, I'm just trying to understand the process. I mean, yeah, the process says that they have to apply. They ask for an application of uh, certificate of appropriateness. They know they're in that uh, historical house. And um, you call up and you say, does your application have both house and barn on it? Come on. You know, <laughs> you know it's, it's more difficulty and they just, they don't want to move with the process. It's just it's them more than the process. Just, you know. And that's only happened once. Am I explaining that enough to you? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I was at the meeting last night and I thought that, I thought the presentation was very good. I thought it was thorough and explained a lot of things about historic districts and so you know I would uh, you know I would say congratulations you did a good job of putting that out there um, it was um, I thought it, for me it was very impressive um, there was a point in time uh, and I say this mercy for your benefit I think that um, one of the homeowners in the pros in the proposed district Mm -hmm. asked if the other homeowners that were present um, would stand up. Mm -hmm. um, and so there was a brief stand up there of lots of people. Yep. I mean, I was trying, it happened well, fast. Well, I was trying to count, yeah. to be honest yeah. with you. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a big guy into <laughs> who's voting for what. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so I was trying to count, and I was trying to figure out who where the two people were tied to one property. So my best guess was that there was 19 or 20 of the 25 property owners that were present. Um, and I can't say every one of them spoke in favor of it, but the interesting thing for me was I, I heard no opposition right. mm -hmm. and knowing that there was, you know, probably 80 to 90 percent of the affected homeowners were present um, and, and nobody really spoke against it. Um, that counts for a lot with me. Right. I mean, I, I kind of feel like we, we are elected to represent what people want. Mm -hmm. um, I would, 
comes back to my kind of everything's got to have a box you know, <coughs> uh, mentality. I would have loved to have seen you know, you know, a petition that said here's 25 people in favor of it, or here's 22 of the 25. Apparently, that's not the process right. that gets used. It's a more informal process, yeah. and so you know, much as that flies in the face of my tying everything <laughs> into a neat package, I get that, and so you know, I, I kind of feel like. The people that are most affected are the people that live there. Right. Um, mm -hmm. There are, you know, 25 people that own properties there. Do I have that right? Yes. Okay. Uh, 25, um, property 25 property parcels, property. but parcels. Yeah. So the honest figure is very difficult because sometimes there are a house on one lot and a garage sits on another lot. Right. Line. Right. So when you're talking, I say properties. 25, 26 properties. Okay. One of them is the church. One other one belongs to the church. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's really hard to tie yeah. it down what you're so, talking uh, about. Well, you know, without making this more difficult than it needs to be, I mean, I didn't hear anybody oppose mm. this. And those are the people that, you know, I mean, that's kind of why we get elected to right. represent yeah. what mm -hmm. people want. And right. so, you know, the last time um, we were talking about this was at our last meeting, and I, for one, did not really feel it was appropriate for us to, to vote or we even discuss much. We didn't, I, you know. I think that's what the public hearings mm -hmm. are really all about. And, right. I, and I said this mm -hmm. to the assembled people last night. I think that's a very powerful process. And it's your opportunity to stand up and go, I hate this or I love it. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, um, and all I heard was, please do this. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know. I think the board should think of this as a home rule charter almost uh, for the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. and. As the legislature yeah. would respect the home rule charter for writing, perhaps we should uh, approve this and recommend town meeting. I, I, I want to just open it up and see if there's mm -hmm. anyone in the public that has a, a comment, an additional comment to make on this before we move to any action. Um, I was at the bylaw committee meeting, and Everett and Virginia were both there. And um, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Thank you. Sorry, that wasn't sure. Yeah, yeah. I knew which one of the Virginias you were was there. About, she's the one who goes to all the Which one do you spend more time with? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't answer that question. <laughs> um, the bylaw committee is extremely detail oriented, as you may guess. Mm -hmm. And uh, the bylaw committee, after grilling them for at least an hour, was extremely complimentary on the thoroughness and the process they used. So I thought you should know that. And that's that's an important part of this. All right. I have one other thing to say. I I thought that this was, in light of the, the passion mm -hmm. about yeah. the situation that created this. Um, I thought it was very well handled in that, um, and Mr. Blodgett, you did a nice job of keeping people on track about the fact that this was about a historic district. This was less about, you know, something that right. might be a bit, you know, passionate or inflammatory. Um, and, you know, that remains to be seen if, how this affects that. I mean, it, but that's, I don't think that's what we're being asked to discuss no, here or to actually, you know, take a position on. And I, I'm mm -hmm. kind of in, in Dan's camp, you know, when... <clears throat> When citizens that are affected rise up and make a statement, we have mm -hmm. to pay attention to it. And, and, and in, in my time on the board, I have not seen this much, you know, mm -hmm. sentiment on an issue on on anything. Right. So, um, you know, it. it yeah, in, in regards to that, I think um, I think actually it was Virginia who had mentioned it to me last night. She had never seen a room filled um, mm -hmm. for for such a discussion. Um, last night so it was and getting back I think to what John was saying I think he miscounted because there was probably about 50 people standing so when they said that people are stand they should have said the people who are standing sit down you know just so you could actually get an accurate count but there have been family, family members I tell you what it would pull the charter committee meeting so so um, I think given that we probably want to um, have a motion then uh, um, I, I, I wonder, will, Dan, if you'll craft will, a motion. I will for craft us. one. I'll be very craft. <laughs> I will move to support the subject matter of Article Nine. That the board support the subject matter of Article Nine at the 2014 subsequent town meeting. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Kevin seconds that. Um, all those in favor? That scores zero. 
Thank right. you. Well Thank done. You. Thank you. Yeah. I toured the meeting from last night. It's just all I say. <laughs> <laughs> So now I think we are moving to the hearing for we the are. tax classification, and you'll get us started. I will. Is Good Victor e Santaniello our shared appraiser? Good evening, Hi. Victor. Thank Good evening, Victor. How are we doing this uh, evening? Well, yourself? Good. Uh, Good. To, to the inhabitants of the town of Reading, notice is hereby given that a public hearing will be held in accordance with the Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 369 of the Acts of 1982, on the issue of determining a residential factor in assessing the percentage of tax burden to be borne by each class of property for fiscal year 2015. The hearing will be held on Tuesday, October 28, 2014, at 7.30 p.m. in the Selectman's Meeting Room, 16 Lowell Street, Reading, Massachusetts. The five classes of property involved are residential, open space, commercial, industrial, and personal property. A copy of the proposed document regarding this topic is available in the Town Manager's Office, 16 Lowell Street, Reading, Mass., Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 7.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m., and Tuesday from 7.30 a.m. to 7 p.m., and is attached to the hearing notice on the website at www.readingma.gov. All interested parties are invited to attend the hearing or may submit their comments in writing or by email prior to 6 p.m. on October 28, 2014 to town manager at ci.reading.ma.us. Well, tonight I have with me uh, two of my board members, Mr. Robert Marshall and Mr. Robert Quinn. Along with us is Pat Sullivan, our uh, assistant appraiser. Uh, apologies for our, from our chairman, uh, Francis Golden, who is, uh, as some of you may know, the uh, chief assessor and uh, chairman of the board for Watertown, who is having his own classification <laughs> hearing tonight there. So, uh, well, the information contained in the, uh, the handout and the presentation is intended to provide the board of selectmen with the information necessary to conduct a public hearing on the classification options available under Massachusetts general law, those options being the selection of a minimum residential factor, selection of a discount for open space, and granting of a residential exemption and or a small commercial exemption. Minimum residential factor. This is what determines whether or not um, you want to split the tax rate. Historically, Reading has never opted to split the tax rate. Therefore, arriving at the minimum residential factor is simple. It will be one. Uh, in doing so, the anticipated tax rate is your anticipated <coughs> tax levy divided by your total valuation and then multiplied by 100. So if the board would adopt a factor one and not split the tax rate, the estimated rate would be $14.71 per thousand. The average single hit family home value for uh, fiscal year 2015 is $464,200. At a factor of one, the estimated 2015 average single family tax bill would be $6,800, uh, $6,828 for a, uh, an estimated tax amount. The way we arrive at values in town is basically looking at sales during a given calendar year. And as most, as you may be aware, sales activity has been mm, pretty much off the charts recently. Um, my basis for comparison, prior assessments were based on sales during county year 2012. 2012, there were 225 qualified tax sales with an average 73 days on market and an average sale price just over $440,000. The sales that I utilized for 2013 to arrive at the assessments <coughs> folks will see on tax bills at the end of December, there were 259 sales. Days on market came down to 54, dropped about a third. The uh, average sale price went up almost 12% to a little over $492,000. That gives you an idea of what we're looking at when we're trying to produce assessments that ultimately yield the numbers we're talking about. So also on that slide, if uh, this issue was made to shift the tax rate, you would have what the anticipated uh, tax rate would be and amounts. And the average single family tax bill history since 2003 indicates this year's uh, average single family tax bill would be up about 3.8%. <clears throat> the average commercial property valuation is anticipated to be a little over 1,449,000. 
and at a factor of one, 1471 tax rate, the estimated bill would be $21,325. And let me skip ahead a little bit. As it compares to uh, last year's, it's up about half a percent. This, this uh, graph just gives you an, uh, an idea of the breakdown of commercial property values in the town. Uh, if we start over on the right, there's uh, only six properties above 10 million. We have 23 from 2 to 10 million, 39 from 1 to 2 million, 66 from 500,000 to a million, and 97 to over 500,000. Sorry if I read that backwards a bit, but that's the way we're going here. One of the other decisions you have to make is a discount for open space. Um, Master and Law Chapter 59, Section 2 defines open space as land which is not otherwise classified and which is not taxable under provisions of Chapter 61A or 61B or taxable under a permanent conservation restriction in which land is not held for the production of income but is maintained in an open and natural condition <sighs> and which contributes significantly to the benefit and enjoyment of the public. An exemption of 25% could be adopted for property classified as Class II open space. Reading has never adopted a discount for Class II open space, and uh, I'm unaware of any properties that meet that definition to qualify for open space. A residential exemption. A Board of Selectmen may adopt a resi residential exemption for residential properties in the town that are owner-occupied an amount of 20% of the average assessed value of all residential properties, including vacant land. Uh, for some reason, when we have to uh, attempt to calculate this, when they say residential properties, they mean everything. They mean uh, residential vacant land, residential non-developable land, potentially developable land, uh, land with garages on it. It kind of gets factored in to the total uh, assessed value, which to me kind of waters down what the potential you know, savings could be for the uh, residential exemption. But if we were to d consider this in uh, Reading adopting, this would raise the residential tax rate to $17.82 from $14.71. would apply to all residential properties before the exemption, which is estimated to be approximately $1,575 off of all owner-occupied residential properties. The estimated break-even point is $506,500. So every home valued at that, uh, above that level pays for the exemptions, every home valued below it. It's only adopted by 13 communities in the Commonwealth, mm -hmm. and since the shift is only in the residential class, again, higher value homes will pay for the exemption to those homes of lower value. <clears throat> Small commercial exemption. Up to 10% of property value for commercial properties only, no industrial, personal, and I should also include residential properties. Total property value has to be less than a million dollars, not more than 10 employees as certified by the Department of Employment and Training. One business in a building of several would qualify only if all other businesses qualified. The exemption goes to the real estate owner and not the business owner. Less than a dozen communities in the Commonwealth have adopted this exemption. Yearly, the Board of Assessors receives a list from the uh, Division of Employment and Training and the list is specific only to be used by the assessors to try to determine uh, eligibility for this exemption. Every year we make an effort to go through that list and identify roughly a handful of properties out of the 234 that report, uh, 234 businesses that report to the uh, Department of Employment and Training. Here's our standings uh, relative to neighboring communities uh, based on last year's taxes. Um, you see over here uh, that Linfield and Reading are uh, the only properties that have a CIP factor, that means commercial, industrial, and property uh, sector less than 10%. So less than 10% of your total mm -hmm. property value is uh, in the commercial sector and this is what their uh, tax rates were and what they uh, actually shifted for those years in the other communities. Uh, this is where we stack up with the uh, Middlesex League for fiscal year 2014. 
again, same concept, the shift factor um, for each community and the average single family tax bills. So I have a question on Winchester where it's one and then it's got, what, how does yeah, that one work? I wasn't that seems able to strange that, hmm. that the uh, hmm. commercial I, rate is lower, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does. I wasn't able to contact my counterpart at Winchester. Because that just seems odd. <laughs> it might be like a 1.05, maybe they rounded it down. I, you, read, you read yeah. one thing on the state website, it says, yes, they split the rate. Oh, Other work. aspects of the state <laughs> mm -hmm. website say, no, it splits the rate. No, it does not split the rate. Um, okay. Well, that's very well, odd. Well, the I mean, odd is that the, the commercial is yeah, lower than the residential, back. which doesn't that's not possible. seem <laughs> well, like it Well, you know, there's happen, another right? oddness, oh. and that's that there's 95% is residential, mm -hmm. yet they split the rate, and then they split it in favor of. And they split in favor of. Okay. Can you set a factor Person. less than one? <laughs> oh. <coughs> uh, you have something that they do. <laughs> um, when I spoke to Winchester, they okay. said that they try to encourage businesses to come into Winchester, and so I guess um, the selectmen have voted to make the rate for commercial slightly lower. Oh, so it's a less than a fat one factor. So it must be just okay. like a commission. Oh. Hmm. Like 0.96 or something. That is very Which that rounds is up very to one. unusual, yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Well, that's good. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I'm glad answer that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, here we are compared to largely residential comparable communities. Bob, well, was this the list that was? The board has looked at this list in the past because yeah. they were especially interested in the 90 plus percent residential mm -hmm. communities. Mm -hmm. And it was, as it is now, it, it's a mix, but it's, uh, it's a lot of them that do split it. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I think this is our last slide. This is. Could you come back to that slide? Sure. And I have personal knowledge of Melrose, where I work, Wakefield, where I currently work, and of course, Reading. This is also in the packet, too. Um, yeah. Uh, yep. so page 12. It, it, yeah, and it's on the, and I it's have on it electronically, but it's sideways, so I... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you have, you have to rotate. <laughs> uh, the old rotator roof. Rotate so Arlington, rotate. for example, has a lower rate um, and no split. Yet they have a higher average tax bill. Are, are the homes just oh, yeah. worth more? Yeah. Yes. I remember yes. seeing that. Yeah. And I was surprised. The ones that are yeah. closer, closer to Boston. Uh, yeah. And especially so. lately over there, they have really um, escalated in the last three years. Mm -hmm. The one number that's not in these numbers that would be difficult to put together is what their tax levy is, which is the other number that's going to drive the rate. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. It just was curious to me. I was looking, when I was looking at it sideways, I thought I was looking at it sideways. It's a more dense community over there as far as the uh, the population as well, too. This this greater population, I believe. Yeah, but that wouldn't, that shouldn't affect the numbers. Yeah. Yeah. You know who might know? <laughs> Our assistant assessor, who's <laughs> <laughs> president of Arlington. Well, was that, <laughs> was, there is also not that much new growth in Arlington, and so they're okay. also considered, you know, going above what they need to do for the levies because of that. So I do know that they're having that kind of struggle with that. Mm -hmm. but the new growth isn't helping, so they have to start it out to the residents mm. more. Mm. Yep, got it. Okay, thanks. Um, just, it's also worth mentioning for, for those at home, um, the library project is not in any of this tax rate yet. Okay. We haven't right. borrowed for it. There's been no, there's been money spent. We've spent all the state's money, just mm -hmm. like you're supposed to first. Um, next winter, we'll borrow money for the project. And uh, a year from now, you'll see an impact of the library debt exclusion. Do we have any rough percent indication? It depends on what we borrow. It's really hard to know, honestly. You've got to know what the cash flow is. 150, 200 bucks a household, somewhere in that ballpark, probably. Per year. Yeah, yeah. for either 10 or 15 years, depending on what we do. Okay. Yeah. And this last slide is, goodness, it appears to be virtually everybody. Um, <laughs> as <laughs> sounds that were previously described by the FinCom uh, to oh, yeah. run an analysis to. I'm sorry you can't read it, but <laughs> I don't want to break it up into three separate slides. I figured you could check that out in, uh, in the packets. Any questions at all? I, I know the answer to this, but this is more for the benefit of the public. Uh, just setting a residential, a, a 
tax factor above one increase the amount of taxes collected by the town of Reading or not? Or is the levy fixed and this simply apportions it between residential and, and the commercial industrial personal? If, if you were to set an MRF above one, yes, you would be establishing a higher residential rate and a lower commercial rate. As opposed, if you go to the, um, oh, I see what you mean. If you yeah. go to the uh, slide that I have up here, if the rate obviously is below one, you know it creates a uh, um, a a higher. Uh, commercial tax rate and a lower residential rate. Uh, my question was about the overall levy on all yeah, properties. Is that collected. affected by the choice of a residential factor, the overall levy of taxes in the community? No, the levy's fixed. Okay. Um, I mean, I, I've always hoped there'd be a day where we, we can afford residents uh, some relief on their taxes uh, by a mechanism. It looks like the decision we make is um, Given the approximate ten percent of Reading uh, tax levy that's in the CIP category versus ninety percent residential, it, it roughly translates into a uh, dollar of tax relief to the residents. Just looking at your charts here, mm -hmm. tell me if I'm right on this. Mm -hmm. Would require a ten dollar increase on the commercial, industrial, personal tax rate. It's roughly a one to ten if you difference these. You know yes. one. So in, in a community like a Burlington, uh, a Woburn that has a much higher percent in CIP, that disparity is not as great. Mm -hmm. So the thing we have to weigh is uh, what is a fair and equitable balance given that Reading is going to lock into this 110 ratio. Uh, how, 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 if we're just affording a very small amount of relief to residents at the expense of really jacking it up on business and that's all class of businesses in town that's the mon pa that's jordan's that's stop and shop they all pay the same commercial rate correct is is that what we want to do as, as a as a policy setting board here uh, who is interested in attracting commercial development uh, which is very competitive right now and we're, we're trying to do it so that's always what we wrestle with here it's not that we we don't want to give relief but is the cost of giving relief so great that well, also is the amount of relief material given yeah. you know what you just described because it sounds like um, it would not be material it would be a small amount of relief for you know a deterrent to additional commercial development um, i think people are hurt by that actually. i don't think the relief is significant i i don't think that it's Big enough to really benefit the residents is the thing without hurting the businesses. But I also believe that the higher rate hurting businesses, hurting businesses is a little bit of a hmm. misnomer because, quite frankly, if you look at all the towns that have a higher rate, businesses are clearly going there. No. And yeah. we've had businesses that have left here and gone to towns that have a much higher tax rate. But they and also, so those, when that they go, they get, they get. I, I would just say that I, I, I wouldn't period. say that that's necessarily mm -hmm. something. That, I know that's the, the initial thing. That, that that's everyone all part says. of the deliberation. It's all we part need of to, the deliberation, yeah. mm -hmm. right? I mean, honestly, I, I think that this is probably not necessarily the right time to move to it. But, um, you know, I think it's something that deserves to be revisited on an annual basis. Well, we must by law. So. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, did you have any, any thoughts? Um, no, I, I think I kind of um, fall in the same um, same line that you're thinking. It, it just isn't, it, one, it isn't the right time, and two, it isn't big enough that it makes that much of a difference. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, a lot of these um, other towns have, a, have, even though they have a similar um, residential percent, uh, percentage, um, certainly have a different makeup. Uh, it seems the way the towns are laid out and set up geographical locations to um, uh, the cities and what have you, uh, where where attracting this is a tough thing to pin down and say, mm -hmm. are they definitely going there? You know, regardless of the rate, right. and, and why are they doing it? That's a great conversation right. to have at some point. Mm -hmm. uh, I just don't think at this time yeah. um, we're in that position to do so. 
Uh, can we have a little more discussion on uh, the open space discount and residential exemption? Uh, how would uh, adopting those, uh, what, what classes of taxpayers are affected by those if we choose to change the status quo? If, if you could just give me a general answer. On that. Open space, again, if there were any properties that fit that in the town mm -hmm. uh, by the stringent nature of the uh, uh, description I gave, which is verbatim from the law, basically on you have a, uh, let me show this visually. You're Italian, just use your hand. I could use my hand. <laughs> uh, didn't, didn't you say there are no properties in town that are there not. So, so no. this is sort of a, so a, a moot point. point. Okay. I, I don't, so I don't see a good vote. reason to de right. deliberate a lot on this. No, if let's no not. Place How about applies. the uh, residential exemption that, that would affect right. classes of residential? Well, residential exemption, what that, hmm. what that is, is I used to work in the city of Chelsea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Chelsea had about a 60-40 uh, split commercial versus residential. So you had a smaller residential sector there. And a lot of the residential sector was not owner-occupied. There were two mm -hmm. or three family invested properties. Mm -hmm. So if you decide to uh, look at a residential exemption, all that does is shift the burden in that class. It has no effect on the commercial tax rate. And in a community like Melrose, well, Wakefield, Reading, where largely owner occupied single family is your, lack of a better word, bread and butter, yep. you have to assume most of them are owner occupied, it turns into that kind of class warfare that yep. uh, mm -hmm. I mentioned earlier. And as you can see by my analysis, the tax rate goes from 1471 to 1782. At 1782, you get to take $1,575 off your taxes. But right. then you get to that break-even point. Yeah. Thanks. Um, John did actually have a comment that he wished me to read on this, um, and John said that he does not favor the imposition of a split rate in Reading. The split rate does not benefit the town revenues. There's no benefit to the budget. The split rate places the bur business burden on their customers, meaning households pay for the tax unknowingly. And finally, a split rate pits residents and businesses against each other rather than focusing attention on our joint problem, keeping spending in control, and finding incremental revenues. So that was his comment. I'll also share with the board a comment that we've discussed at the Finance Committee. Um, in conjunction with next year when the library debt will hit the tax bill and with the Finance Committee's discussion of having, a, uh, having an operating override in the next few years, um, the board and, and the appraiser and the uh, assistant appraiser are looking this winter into ways to reduce the tax bill on our senior citizens. So that, that just again is a reorganization of tax money, doesn't collect more or less, but it just rearranges, if you will, how you can do it. And um, you know, depending on what they come up with, we may be going to a town meeting um, on some of this. I know so other communities have done that. an exemption for people over a certain age, is that there, there are various <coughs> statutory exemptions for uh, senior citizens, um, surviving spouses, um, probably not uh, veterans, uh, senior workout program. Uh, those all fall into a category of uh, statutory exemptions and what we're gonna do is take a look at uh, where we are now and where we think we can move these to uh, per perhaps, you know, help out uh, uh, the uh, population that needs the help the most. Uh, any of those exemptions means tested? Do they depend on the income of uh, the yes, person? The, yeah. That's okay. what we look at because okay. uh, the income and asset limitations are in some of these woefully yeah. low yeah, yeah. and the exemption amount themselves are low. So, we so when will we so you, are you going to make recommendations to us at some time over the course of the year after you've studied that? Yeah, well, when I do study it, uh, my first stop is <laughs> spell it to the right of me <laughs> and uh, use the film that runs it up the flagpole. So hopefully we'll have something in place definitely to be considered well in advance of uh, town meeting in the spring. And um, the board last had this conversation five to seven years ago when we did bring articles to town meeting because we studied what other communities were doing just in our neighborhood. Mm -hmm. We found we were a little on the low end. We were being a bit of a cheapskate for some of our elderly. So we just raised it up to somewhere in the median. But it's something we should do every so often at the very mm -hmm. least. And this seemed like the right time with the library debt climbing up on us next year. 
if we have a member of the public here. Yes, I was actually getting ready to just say open it up to the public, and I know we have at least one individual who would like to. Well, I think I came here under a false assumption. I came here because I got home from work today, oh. <laughs> and I read this newspaper header that said my real estate taxes are going to go up 3.7 percent. Right. And it doesn't sound like that's what you're saying here tonight. I, I, so if my if I'm wrong, I'd like to know if my real estate taxes uh, or at least the possibility of, the, of them going up 3.7%. Is that what's being discussed tonight? That's not what I'm hearing now. I can hear something very different. The average, based upon the average single family value and average single family tax bill from last year to this year, which, let's see, 3.8%. The increase is 3.7, 3.8%. Which translates into if your house is valued, the average value for this year is four hundred and sixty-four thousand two hundred. That's up from four hundred and forty-six thousand last year. Uh, the the increase would be three point eight percent. If you're up below that value, your increase is less. So that's not an increase to the rate. That's just an correct. That's just that's the average single family tax bill. So, so my so rate the, per thousand. It's actually, it's, it's actually going down. That's what I thought. Okay, so that's good. So that's what I was going to ask. The rate per the product of the two that matter. is going down, but the assessments, it's based on the, your assessed it value. And so if the assessed right. value goes up, you're going to pay more. Right? The multiplier is, gets bigger, <laughs> you know, as your, as your <laughs> the article is a little. Well, I saw that tonight, and I, I'm I, surprised you're the only person that's here. <laughs> <laughs> because I read the article. Yeah, I, it, I, I knew that I knew was going to be a problem when I saw the article, yeah. too. <laughs> in, in the last thing, this is almost totally off topic, but what I was going to say, if this was accurate, which is, is not, is that um, we're talking about relieving the burden for elderly and poor people. But, you know, I go to work 60, 70, 80 hours a week sometimes, support a wife and kids and mm. I'm hurting too and you know the cost to live in Reading is going up and up and up. We have one of the highest water rates in the state. We have one of the highest electricity rates in the mm. state. I don't know no, about no, that we one. Have oh, one no, we have one of the, one of the best. State. Yeah. The, the electricity yeah. we have bill. municipal <laughs> board and it's yeah. some of the lowest That's in one the town. I will tell give you some so good bill every month is three hundred over three hundred and thirty something. Do you have electric heat? Not. You, you, it's, it's how much for a house? Over three hundred and thirty dollars for a single family. Wow. A single family home. Wow. So, oh, you need to go so there's something, to yeah, there's something going on there. Look, 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 look at what's our MLD. Yeah. They put out their no solution. I talked to every one of my neighbors. They're all three hundred plus dollars a month. So I don't know where you're getting your data, but I'm getting my data from. Mine's the seventy nine. Is, is it cent central air in the summer that's pushing that? No up, or? central yeah. air. Wow. I have no electric. I think yeah, what everybody so was commenting on was oh. a, a rate. The rate. Yeah, the rate. So there's a, the, we have a, right. we do have a rate that is right. among the lowest. And it's, there's something going on that's a usage That's thing. a usage yeah. 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 Um, yeah. You guys got to turn the arc welder <laughs> off or something. I'm, I'm not trying to make light of it, but yeah. that's, that's a giant bill. That, that, that is, is, that is okay, unusually high. Our MLD again, but I, I will tell you, I've spoken to four or five of my neighbors, and they're all in the same hmm. pocket I'm in. They're all in the, you know, 275 to 3 330 something a month and wow. none of them are electric heat hmm. and uh, yeah i mean you know there are people struggling and including families with kids too so oh, it's, for sure it's, it's yeah. tough mm -hmm. you know? yeah and you said you've already reached out to rmld i did have they come out to the house to do an assessment for you they did not come out to the house no. is that something they even offer yeah mm -hmm. Who's yeah, I, well, they have who's energy, energy, audit. they energy audits. Yeah. Energy audits, yeah. I, I would Absolutely. seriously look into that because that sounds I mean, yeah. really the, high. The water, um, the water is three over three hundred a quarter. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's that's, that's about right. Right. Like right. Well, yeah. you think it's all right? Cause I yeah. don't. No, I'm <laughs> saying that's about right. I wasn't oh, saying right. it's all right. It's not, <laughs> I mean, it's not out of Different, line with yes. what he is living here. Yeah. My parents paid sixty-five a quarter thirty-five years ago. Well, let us Anyways, know. Thank you for listening to me. Uh, let us know if you get a response because we have a liaison to RMLD and I, we can follow up on that. I am the liaison to yeah. RMLD, and I would like to know if you hear back. From I think they should give so you an answer on please, that. Please, yeah. okay. you know, please you. let me know. Yeah.
you can always respond that on the um, town website to the uh, board of selectmen, mm -hmm. and, and then and, we, and then we won't know who is going to actually <laughs> respond back to you. Sorry, well, I, I, had, I had to tie that back into earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So, but thank you, right? thank you for coming. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Thank, thank you for coming. Appreciate right. it. Do we have anything We're from the assessors? The Board of Assessors, any, any, any comments? <laughs> I, apparently you have to be I named Robert <laughs> to be on the board. <laughs> uh, yeah, <something> else. <laughs> I know if we vote a residential factor one, we're going to get letters to the Chronicle for the next three days saying, why do they do this? We, we wish you were here tonight to speak your mind, and we, we hope you've had your questions answered when we, we take this vote. I'd just like to take the opportunity to ask the board, how's this guy working out? <laughs> oh! <laughs> Tells us all we need to know. I thought so. Okay. Oh, That's um, <laughs> on the spot now. Yeah. Um, um. That's an opportunity knocking right there. <laughs> <laughs> Vic is doing a great job. You know, we had this meeting December 17th last year. Yeah, that's an excellent point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I know from mm. talking to Wakefield, they're also very happy. It's it's worked out really, really well. I'm certainly very thrilled. It, it seems to be much smoother um, just in comparison to past years where I've been yep. on FinCom and have heard It was a little bumpy for a while. A little bumpy for a while. Shall I? All right. Move the, move the Board of Selectmen close the hearing, establishing the fiscal year 15 tax rate. Second. Okay, thanks, John. Uh, all those in favor? 4 0. I'm going to move that the Board of Selectmen not grant an open space discount for fiscal year 2015. Second. All those in favor? Move that the Board of Selectmen not adopt a residential exemption for fiscal year 2015. Is there a second? Second. Uh, is there any discussion? I'm, I'm assuming we've had our discussion, yeah. but yeah. you know, Sorry. all those in favor? Move that the Board of Selectmen adopt a residential rate of one for fiscal year 2015. Right. Is second. there a second, John? Okay. Any, any further discussion on that? All right, all those in favor? Move the Board of Selectmen not grant a commercial exemption for fiscal year 2015. Second. Okay. All those in favor? All right, four zero. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Thought. Appreciate Thanks. it. Yeah. Have a good evening. Bye. Along with some other things, I guess. Yeah, some stuff here. Um, I suggest Mystic Valley will be here probably in 20 minutes. Okay. Um, I can go ahead and give you a, a financial form three preview. I was that's we uh, might, that's might tomorrow be. night, by Excellent. the way. Okay. Yep. I, I, I uh, will unfortunately ooh, not right. be able to be there. Okay. But, uh, I don't think I will yep, be able I will to be there. Take the helm. You're going to be there. I need to. Okay. Um, I'll give you a 15 minute version. Let's see. Okay. Uh, let's see. There's uh, the usual list of public uh, budget meetings, the schools and the town is generally very busy in January, and the finance committee takes over in March. Revenues for the last year, FY14, not the year we're in now, were almost $2 million above estimates. You're going to see some numbers here that are staggering, and that's one of them. Uh, the biggest driver was, uh, was the motor vehicle excise tax. Some of that is technical because at the end of the year last year, we set the tax rate so late mm -hmm. that new growth couldn't really be certified the way it normally would, would be like it can be this year. So to make a long story short, Sharon had a chop uh, excise vehicle taxes very low, artificially low, so now they look artificially high. Not everyone went out and bought a new car. Right. Um, property taxes you know, did come in very strong, and you can see a bunch of one-time things there. And you know, this is a discussion we have with FinCom. There's always something one time. Just put a number in there. We just don't know what its name is. So we had, you know, maybe half of that revenue is sustainable. Maybe half is not. <clears throat> we did revise the uh, excise tax budget for, again, this current fiscal year in FY15, up by about 150000 out of that 450. But the most important thing is we're revising it to $3.15 million. We don't think we can go any higher than the, the 3.15 million because this number is way out of line with any past year. It was never 3 million. 
So the, the one thing about excise taxes is they don't generate new sales. You buy a car, you're not going to buy a car next year. It's not you're going to be liking it so much you buy another, although you never know. <laughs> um, property taxes, all that's in the base. We're all set. Right. The services, permits, it's, that's all set. Um, we did get some excellent news, and I'm sorry they've left, but the, um, the appraiser just about two days ago told me that new growth is $844,000. We've been carrying $500,000 for the current year. Mm -hmm. So there's another 340000 that's available okay. at November town meeting that we'll use to balance the budget. So we'll Great. use less free Great. cash in November excellent. to balance. That's, that's, that's nice. Excellent. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. you know, one of the, a big chunk of that is uh, Redding Woods. So you can mm -hmm. look in the back at one of the reasons why all this development has been happening. But Pulte Homes is a large portion of that. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, we have some big projects in the works and they kind of sneak in. One of the examples, though, I gave to FinCom, actually, I guess it's in here, I'm sorry. Um, as a result of all this revenue, both in 14 and 15, we've been, add to add, we've been able to add almost a million dollars, which is great. Mm -hmm. Last year, our expenditures were uh, almost $2 million under budget, which is, again, a shocking number in a lot of ways. Mm. Um, you can see some of the components of it. Um, these things up here are generally shared costs. Then you see the school department had a lot of special ed money they did not spend out of district, and the town turned back quite a lot of money. Typically, the town turns back somewhere around that three, four, five hundred thousand. The schools are usually close to zero, and this number can vary because it's a little artificial. Sometimes we use money to balance snow and ice in April, so yep. you can't always just right. compare it. But that's a lot of money to not spend. Um, the result of that, plus the numbers we're proposing to use. But Bob, that, back to that last yeah, slide. Right. That's not. You can't necessarily predict that or forecast no. No. Mm -hmm. um, regeneration. You can predict some of it as the year's unfolding, but you couldn't have seen it 18 months in advance is right. the fairest way. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we have almost $10 million, or about 12% free cash. FinCom has an official policy of five, an unofficial one of seven to eight. It doesn't matter. We're well above in free cash any reasonable amount. Um, I'm not going to go through the rest of the presentation in a lot of detail. But I will tell you that this is this is an important number at the bottom. This is how much free cash keeps increasing every year, no matter how we try to recklessly spend it. it keeps growing. <laughs> so I've finally given up this year. I say recklessly spend it. It's not going to matter. It just keep growing. Um, some members of FinCom had questions on the stabilization fund, so there's just another figure. This uh, million and a half is part of free cash. The others are not. Mm. I'm going to go over the two-year budget forecast, and again, I'll go through this really fast, but this is important. Um, we're assuming 500000 in new growth, so that's only about a three or a little more than a 3% increase, mm -hmm. two and a half plus the new growth. Um, local revenue is about the same, about 3%, not really a big difference. The new growth may well be higher than 500000 because there are still some big projects in the pipeline. But absent those projects, that's our long-term run rate, so we're careful how to, how to forecast that. Uh, the Finance Committee uh, tomorrow night is going to tell you that they are going to guarantee 2.5% increase in state aid, and if any less than that comes in, they will supplement it with free cash. Mm -hmm. So that's a budget certainty, which is really helpful to have. Mm -hmm. um, transfer isn't available, not much of a change. What that puts together is just about a 3% revenue increase. Not quite. Not bad, but certainly not great. Because we use free cash to balance the current year's budget, and that will change in November, that would be about a 0.7% budget increase for the next year if you didn't use any free cash at all. So that's the painful part of using free cash, and they don't use it in the future. You get that kind of cliff you fall off of. Um, again, FinCom has taken care of state aid, so, you know, we it's not like we won't care, but it's not going to impact the FY16 mm -hmm. budgets, at least. Uh, new growth could be higher or lower. We don't really know. And um, I'll get to this when we discuss the charter. RMLD is being a bit feisty, and they've talked about reducing or eliminating the dividend, which <coughs> they can't by law, but lawyers can do amazing things. Bob, Bob are you aware that um, the, through the MMA or otherwise that boards of selectmen and finance committees, maybe through their own professional organizations, are, are lobbying their state legislators? on the subject of state aid on a regular, yeah. incessant basis? Yes. Are we doing that? Uh, we are, and the state in an incessant basis is not raising it. 
Well, no, no, we're doing all we can do. Yeah. Well, okay. I mean, so, short of camping out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the, um, the three reps we have, absolutely no. Okay. Back to the uh, previous slide for a second. So RMLD, is, is that some kind of a threat? Well, it is in the sense that litigation can always give you uncertain results. Um, there's been threats of litigation made by board members in public. Uh, the board has taken votes in public meetings to reduce or eliminate that payment. I have seen those. Uh, that, those votes are currently not legal. Their council, our council all agree you can't do that. But just it's important, that's such a big number, it's important to know that the attitude does exist over there. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, with good lawyers, who knows what you can accomplish, quite frankly. So it's, it's not a current threat, but it's, it was discussed last night at the Charter Committee. It's probably an important thing for the public to know as well, that their representatives uh, that they vote for on the Reading Municipal Light Department wish to penalize the town of Reading. And so they actually should take that into consideration when I, they are voting for their representation or, on that board. Or considering your own for That board is not, <laughs> is not a board that represents, um, it's, it's, it's the town of Reading. Reading owns that board. We spent the money to start it up and we have additional clients, which is terrific, but, um, but I would the, expect the a board. Risk, we're the at-risk owner. We're the owner. We take the risk, correct. Um, and you look at the, you know, the liability, the town of Reading maintains all liabilities tied to the operation of that enterprise. Mm -hmm. um, and I, and you know, first of all, you know, when I saw that there was such votes being entertained, I was shocked. And when they had them, I was appalled. And I do think that the public needs to be aware of I that. think the public absolutely needs to be uh, aware of the I individuals really who you, would like to withhold money from the town of Reading mm -hmm. for an investment that we own. Right. I, I think that's really important. And I may as well fill you in on the charter discussion last night where the charter committee has informally come down on, and I think formally we'll do this next week, is um, they're effectively passing the RMLD hot potato into the future. So there are going to be some charter changes that are very cosmetic, not meaningful at all as regards RMLD, names of RMLD Board of Commissioners instead of RMLD Board. But what, what one of them is going to suggest either in November or January town meeting through an instructional motion is that a group is formed consisting of two members of the selectmen, two members of the RMLD commissioners, and three members of the public to be chosen by the moderator um, to study this issue and to try to avoid litigation try to come to some meeting of the minds on what are all the issues between this relationship and let's hammer them out. Mm -hmm. Because I will tell you that emotions at the Charter Committee have run very high. They've run all the way from we're going to withhold the dividend payment from you to we're going to have five recall petitions next April. So you ought to just and, be and aware not for of us, that I sentiment. <laughs> not for us. No, for the five commissioners or the well, four I now there's one vacant. <laughs> so it, it's, it's an emotional issue and mm -hmm. it is an issue that probably should be solved not behind closed doors because it's an open meeting right. but with cooler heads if it mm -hmm. can be and I think I expressed on your behalf that I believe the selectmen would absolutely be interested in a process like that because I know you've said that we would. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know and some you know other things attended to this that you know have to be considered is that um, if we have to defend a situation like this in court um, against one of our subsidiary Right. companies actually I mean if you think about yeah. it that way mm -hmm. um, that's a staggering thought it is mm -hmm. and um, it's a staggering cost it, and it, so it's to a that phenomenal end, waste I mean, of funds it, phenomenal waste of that we do something? not have <laughs> as a town I mean is there a number that we have to put it's non-productive is what it is this is totally well, non-productive you know in my in my business life you know if, the, if we were facing litigation and I was budgeting you know we would sit down with our lawyers and say if a happens what will this cost if b happens what will this cost right. and of course that you know those that kind of a process drives you to the thing you just yeah. described right um mm -hmm. i mean how in god's name can we be actually sitting here thinking that the town and one of its assets are going to do battle in court at the expense of 
The town. The town. I, it, it's unthinkable. It is unthinkable, absolutely. The public okay. needs to be fully aware of this, and the process mm -hmm. needs to be engaged yeah, instantly, and, and as far as I'm It's concerned. crazy. For it's things just I've heard crazy. personally in public, these are individuals speaking, not necessarily a board voting, so you should be aware of those comments. But there has been a board vote. But you vote. heard some we comments know that there at town meeting in September vote. from the yes. chairman. Mm -hmm. Well, the yeah. chairman well. St stood in town meeting yeah. and essentially threatened the town. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and um, caused the, an article to pass by so doing, I think. Yeah. So, anyways, moving past that topic. So, mm -hmm. actually, can you back up yeah. to one? Uh, so, the proposal for next year for FinCom is to use no free cash. Not yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. No, uh, I'm they joking. They haven't yet. actually okay. said yet, but I'll show you what you're going to look at. <laughs> Thank you. Um, accommodated costs look like they're running between four and five percent, which isn't bad historically. No, that's not bad. But there's another portion of that I'll need to tell you about. Mm -hmm. And I'll cut quickly to the chase. The Finance Committee has also, if you will, guaranteed with supplemental free cash no higher than 8% health insurance for two years. So that's where we're going to budget. If it comes in at 10, they'll use free cash. If it comes in less than 8, uh, they'll use less free cash, is the thinking. So that helps put a cap on that 4.5% number. Mm -hmm. And this is something we did for a couple of years and then got away from two or three years ago. This, this is creating a lot of budget certainty for the superintendent and me. Mm -hmm. It's really helpful. Now, Absolutely. we have so much free cash that it's the right time to do it, mm -hmm. I think. Peck and Gick, what, yeah. what do they stand for? Uh, <laughs> oh, boy, here we Gick. go. The Gick is a uh, state-run health insurance plan, yeah. and uh, we just leave it at that for now. And what is Peck? Uh, that's the Public Employees Committee. So that's a group of all okay. light department, town, and school un uh, right. union employees that sit mm -hmm. in this room with me yep. and negotiate health insurance. Okay. So we hope to have answers well in time for the budget process. We're out to bid. We should be picking a, a new provider or the same provider uh, and know that for December. Okay. Can, can you back up for just a second? This one? Uh, no, no, the one. So on the, on the bottom here, Reading Health Insurance premiums paid oh, by yeah. 20 so, Someone was asking that. Um, you know, I'm not exactly sure the reasons for this. This could speak to employment. This could speak to uh, turnover of employment. So for instance, I know the school said a couple of years ago, um, some of their older teachers were retiring who perhaps were on a spouse's plan and they were being replaced with younger teachers not on a spouse's plan. Yeah. So you don't, even, you don't even have to have a new employee right. net right. to have more enrollment. But that's so it's huge. some combination. But that's it is. It is a pretty di big difference. That's and big. When you look at the other than the schools um, on the town mm -hmm. side, um, and this is the premiums paid. This is not enrollment. This is the dollars going out. We're only going up 1% a year, which is really pretty amazing. Mm. So we've cut our enrollment to some degrees. We have an opt-out that's helped slightly. Mm -hmm. We're just not growing employment, um, mm -hmm. you know, and our premiums have been pretty well up till now. Um, I think I already covered all this. Uh, energy costs and special ed, the schools yeah. will talk mm -hmm. a little about that. Um, energy costs, I just got an update uh, late today. They're going to be okay in FY16, but not okay in FY17. Natural mm -hmm. gas is spiking. Right. Um, we get into it at a good time. We enjoyed a couple of good years. We're mm -hmm. paying the piper in the next couple of years. Mm -hmm. Any ideas where our U.S. Senators are opposing this uh, tentacle well, pipeline? And that pipeline is the reason why the prices are going up because so there's not you can thank them capacity. For that. Yeah. So that's a backyard thing. Mm -hmm. uh, where this all falls out is if no free cash is used, the operating budgets next year look like minus one and plus two percent. That's slightly higher than they were when we had a financial forum uh, in early, I think it was in September. If we use the same amount of free cash, and my guess is FinCom would at most use that because they're giving you those other guarantees, we're looking at a 2.5% operating budget for next year, or in that ballpark, and probably closer to 2% in the year after that. If you tried to say how much free cash do we need to have 3.5%, 3.5 is approximately what we've done for the last three years for operating budgets. We've actually had a pretty good time comparatively. You would have to use five million of that 10 that you saw some several slides ago, and then you'd be sort of out of luck after two years. And just to be clear, one of the reasons the Finance Committee wants to do a two-year budget look is override in year three. That's that's their thinking anyways. Um, we keep regenerating how do, how do more free cash that we use up, which yeah. I don't understand. Yeah, is that a, well, the question I always ask myself is, is that a problem? <laughs> uh, the issue is the same. It's uh, our costs are going up higher. How do those numbers on that previous slide 
bring you to a conclusion that you should have an operation over there. That's not what um, I see there. Well, I guess this slide right here, if, if you're willing to use this much free cash, the real question is what happens? We used a million seven last year, we ended up with more. Yeah. I didn't expect mm -hmm. that. I think I said I'd eat my hat. I don't wear one, luckily. <laughs> Um, if we use a million seven for the next ten years, at some point, is that going to be a bad idea? I don't know anymore. I used to think so. <laughs> I can't tell. Um, I think if you ask the schools, uh, two and a half percent is absolutely not something they can live on. I think if you ask me, um, we do the best we can for the next couple of years, but it's going to not provide some services that people want. To to my earlier discussion about social services. So, well, I think uh, this. I mean that. That thinking has got to drive us quickly to yep. the strategic planning process, exactly. so that we understand what we're going to, where we're headed, right. and you know what that's going to cost. I mean, that I think that that kind of discussion, you know, I, I know that we're engaged in that, but you know, there's been a lot of balls in the air. We probably yeah. have to re-engage that. Yeah, I agree. Um, and that's really, you know, that's that's really the end of the presentation. Um, a comment on the state is, if you think of everything I just went through really fast, the state has the same problems. They have revenues of five, but they have costs higher than five. And so they set their priorities, and, and honestly, local aid is not a high priority. It's just as simple as that. That's not a political statement. That's a financial fact. Um, state aid has been going up slower than revenues have because they have those accommodated costs, those fixed costs, and other higher priorities. Um, you know, the struggle we're going to have tomorrow night and in the future is um, the credibility of the finance department for predicting revenues is it's always better than you say. And when we use free cash, things always work out better than you say. That's absolutely and, true. And that just happens every year. <laughs> I can't say it hasn't. So let's just have a party. I'm not going to stop anyone anymore. <laughs> Um, and then, this is your point, John, I think that uh, the strategic planning we've all talked about, you saw today, um, you know, it's, it's not going to solve our problems to have commercial growth, but it helps. You just saw $340,000 drop out of the sky. Um, you know, that's 100000 on the town side and 200000 on the schools that we otherwise wouldn't have had. That's nice. That's bigger than or approximately the same as the meals tax. But this is the real example I like, that if you think back to Johnson Hardware and the Atlanta grocery store, those have been redeveloped significantly. Yep. Mm -hmm. They add $250,000 annually in taxes. Mm -hmm. That's not bad, but it's not like it solved the world's problems right. Right, or even mm -hmm. the town's problems. So that's something to keep in mind when you do think of commercial growth is you're not going to grow yourself commercially out of the issues we have. No. It no. just helps at the edges. Yeah. It's going to be a series of things, yeah. mm -hmm. you, know, you know, ranging from increased revenues there to other opportunities for revenue. I mean. It's not going to be one, there's not one right. big fix that's going to solve this. Mm -hmm. Well, here's the one big fix that is going to solve it. That's the override. So, you know, the discussion that the Finance Committee wants to lead, and, and I'm willing to be part of it, but I take a little different twist. Um, we have we have a library override or exclusion already voted and approved. Mm -hmm. I don't mind conceptually tucking that into any future need and coming up with an overall package. I think it's disingenuous to add it on top of the library as if the library weren't there. Because really that should have been part of a discussion maybe three or four years ago about let's do a whatever override and let's pay for the library, the early education, whatever other things we have that are big projects, in addition just our, our operating needs. So that's, that's my take on it. Um, it's, it's really, it comes down to a community value statement. What do you want to be? You had a resident here today, I must get at least one email or call a week, if not more. Um, this town is becoming increasingly difficult to afford to live in. Yeah. But if you look at other towns that we always say we aspire to be, our property tax bill is substantially lower. Sure. Mm -hmm. What do you really want? We had uh, the second grade of Killam in here today, and a couple of the kids, they're, all, they're asking all kinds of interesting questions that are really hard to answer often. Once in a while, you get a little taste of a parent's question. Why are my tax bills so high? <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember thinking that as a second grader. <laughs> you know, the answer I gave one of them today is, there's so many school kids in this town, and there's so few businesses. That's why single-family homes yeah. pay large property taxes. Yeah. 
But the other side of that coin is not compared to all the towns we compare ourselves and want to be like. You know, go back to Victor's list mm -hmm. and look. Right. It's really staggering. Our immediate towns are in our ballpark. North Reading's higher, mm -hmm. um, the high school. Yeah. Um, they're 800 a 1000 bucks higher per household, though. So it's, it's a tough call. Nobody wants to pay more taxes, but what services do you want? And back to the FinCom question, have you wrung out all the excesses you can? No, nobody wants to give up the services they use. Right. <laughs> I can tell you that. Yeah, so the other thing FinCom has agreed to do that I hadn't mentioned is to cut the spending on capital for the next two years. Not by a lot, but by a couple hundred thousand dollars a year. And I actually suggested that because I knew they wanted to do it, and we're okay with that because in the middle of the year we'll still be spending money on capital. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when the free cash rolls in the door as it does, that's when mm -hmm. we should spend it on, on capital. So you're going to see a request of 724000 I think, in November on capital. That's a lot of capital. We can easily cut 200000 out of next year's capital if we're doing things like that. And then you might see another request in January town meeting. So our capital budget, while not perfect, is in far better shape than well, our I operating think budget. We took that approach when we were in those years where things were really being cut back yeah. on the yeah. state aid, and it gave us a way to, as something was unexpected and one time, it <coughs> matched up to that. We did, and then we got away from that because things got a little tighter. But I will say, going back uh, 15 or 16 years when I was on the Finance Committee, we also had years where we spent 120000 on capital total. Yeah. And that was not we a good solution. We probably don't want to be at that no, situation we, So we don't want to go, again. so this is one of those discipline things where it's okay to do a little bit for a while, but you've got to be really careful. Because mm -hmm. it's really easy to say, you know, another 200000 would be good, maybe 500000 would be and all of a sudden, you have old fire engines, you have operating costs you didn't expect, and you have safety issues. So you got to be a little careful. Uh, and those, you know, that approach is far more expensive in, in the medium run. and long run. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, the, the only benefit to that is very short term and it's very short sighted. Yeah. So that gives you a picture for tomorrow night. You don't have to come. Okay, great. <laughs> all right. Okay. Gene? Right on schedule for Mystic Valley. Mm -hmm. Good evening. Good evening. Um, tonight we have a representative from Mystic Valley that's going to give us an update. Um, this is, I think, part of an ongoing conversation of our community partners. Mm -hmm. And uh, going back to the strategic plan, <clears throat> where we have a lot had a lot of discussion about, particularly in community services, what services do we provide? What are our core? services that we need to provide? What are some of the other services that we provide that are kind of nice to have? Um, and so as we think about you know, future programming, future budgeting, um, those are some of the things that we're working on to get the right combination of things. Um, I will say that we do do a lot of partnering with the other community partners in town and, and in the region. Um, and so I think we've, we've done a good job of that. Uh, Mystic Valley is a tremendous partner um, because they provide a much deeper level of service than what we're doing. Um, and we do refer a lot of people to Mystic Valley, so it's a tremendous resource to have. And I'd like to invite Dan O'Leary up to uh, give a presentation, a quick update on where we're at. Thank you, Jim. Welcome. Good evening. I'm Dan O'Leary. I'm the director of Mystic Valley Elder Services. Out for you. Would you? That'd be great. Thank you. I'm not going to bury you in paper, but there's uh, hopefully a couple of things in here that uh, are going to be of interest to you. Um, can I just ask you, uh, how many folks are familiar with some of Mystic Valley services? Okay. How are we doing? Very well. Pretty, Pretty good. good. Pretty good? I yeah. think so. Okay. I ask that question seriously because we're, we feel a special relationship with the towns. Um, as you know, you invest in Mystic Valley all the services. You know, the, the town already contributes $5,593 in cash match, and hopefully that will be in the budget. Um, <laughs> and we appreciate that, and it, and it makes a difference. And, and every, I can tell you that every one of the cities and towns, our eight cities and towns, each one to this day, continues, even in tough financial times, continues to make a cash match because they value what we do. So what I thought might be the best way to spend my few minutes with you tonight is to uh, direct your attention inside the folder to what we will be sending to the town along with the invoice um, in terms of the service value that you're getting. And it's on the right hand side in your packet. And we send this each year to the, uh, each one of our communities to give you 
a concrete example of what is being returned into the town. So as you see, and I'm not going to read this, um, but in fiscal 14, so we're on this, I think on the same fiscal year, yep. July to July, mm -hmm. June to July, uh, that we serve 508 residents, different individuals in the uh, town of Reading. And the value of those services was $2.6 million. Mm -hmm. um, and you can see as, we, as you run down the list of kind of programs how that was apportioned. So, um, and one of the things I think is particularly interesting, and, and I hope you'll find that to be true, is that of the 508 people that we serve with any variety of these services, 110 of those folks are eligible to be in a nursing home today. And what, what that means, clinically eligible, they, they could qualify to be at Wingate or Meadowview or any nursing home. Yeah, ADL. through ADLs. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly right. Yeah. Exactly right. I try not to use those kind of. Uh, uh, a couple extra insurance guys here. You know yeah. about that. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Okay. So we're going to keep the, you know, We're going to help <laughs> you with those ADLs and IADLs. Um, but in all seriousness, maybe even IEPs. That 110 of those folks <laughs> would be eligible to be in a nursing home. So their level of care, their level of need, is at that level. And happily for those 110 people, and I'm going to say for the people in, in the town already, they're at home. Now, I'm not going to take full credit for this. It's a combination of agencies like Mystic Valley, Reading Elder Services. They might be getting services through the Visiting Nurse Association. So it's a, it's a partnership. And, and we're proud to be a partner in that effort. <coughs> As you know, we've been partners now for almost 40 years. That's about how long uh, Mystic Valley has been in existence. When Mystic Valley came into existence in uh, July 1st, 1975, and I think Reading came into the, the consortium in was either 77 or 78. So you've been right there almost from the beginning. And uh, again, we hope, you know, we're in our business, we're happy to turn 40. We're glad we talk about it. We're, we, don't, we don't care about being 39. We're happy to be 40 years old. Um, and so you can see that we have a variety of services, whether it's just helping people understand what their options are, and that's fundamentally the most important thing, so people know what their choices are. That's through information referral, case management services, caregiver support, we partner with transportation. We're the agency that provides the meals ever at the senior dining site, and we're the ones who deliver the meals you know, here in town. We have Shine Benefits Counseling, Shine Serving Health Insurance Needs of Everyone. That is a booming business, if you will. No cost, it's all done by certified volunteers. Um, it's to help people pick the right drug plan, the right Medicare supplemental insurance plan. Uh, that, so that it's open enrollment now, so that this is the time of year for that. Money management, legal assistance, et cetera. So uh, I'm happy to answer any questions, um, to use my time wisely and not to keep you here uh, undue length of time. The other issue that is important to us, hopefully important to you, is that the town appoints people to our board of directors. That's been the tradition. Mm -hmm. It's a little unusual in nonprofit world where somebody else appoints members to your board of directors. Mm -hmm. In our case, it's been great because not only do we have your cash contribution towards the agency, but we have your direct involvement because you are appointing people to our board. And as you probably all know, Rita McKinley, who was a, is a longtime resident of the town, a great public servant, great board member for Mystic Valley, has retired this past year. So we have an open seat, um, and so in, it's, in a, it's a select men appointment. Um, and so we're hoping that you will post that or whatever the process here in town, and we'll, uh, I'll be happy to, Jane, as you know, Jane is a board member. Yep. Glad to have her, great board member. Bill Hecht is a board member. Mm -hmm. um, so we're hoping to get that seat filled. So uh, I'm happy to stay here as long as you want. We can talk yeah. about ADLs, and we can talk about meals. Uh, <laughs> I hear tomorrow is hot dog day at the senior center, and that's always a big day. Uh, yeah. May not be the most nutritional meal, but it's probably the most popular meal we serve. <laughs> <laughs> we have low sodium hot dogs. I don't know if that's an oxymoron, but uh, <laughs> if there's any questions I can answer, I'll be mm. happy to do so. I have a question. Yes. So the board seat that yes. you would like us to solicit for, can you tell us a little bit about that, what's involved in being on that board? Yep, we're happy to. Uh, and we meet, the board meets 10 times a year, so they get a, a break. Uh, it's monthly board meeting the last Tuesday of each month, not the fourth Tuesday, but the actually the last Tuesday of the month. The board meets from 10 a.m. to 11.30 in Malden, that's where our main office is. Um, we hope that we, we don't require, but we hope people will join one committee. 
We have traditional committees. We have a, a program committee, a development committee, a finance committee, a personnel committee. Uh, and probably just like here at town, the real, the real work of the, the organization gets done in committee. So we encourage and hope people that will join one committee. And they usually meet uh, monthly or less. So that's, that's the, the minimum commitment, um, what we hope. The other commitment um, is we want people who have an interest and in, in care about the issues that we're dealing with, which is to help people stay at home. I, I ask because I think it is important that we fill a seat there. Mm -hmm, I agree. We should fill it. And, mm -hmm. you know, we should be able to talk about it to people. Right. You know, we, we need to be mm -hmm. able to let people know what it's sure. all about. So, mm -hmm. uh, Yes. Uh, Dan, does your legal assistance uh, cover things like uh, personal financial uh, instruments, wills, trusts, any no, of that? that? No, that we don't. What, okay. um, we use Greater Boston Elderly Legal Services. Oh, okay. There is and a, they're, yeah. So they're primarily focused on benefit questions, Medicare, um, okay. issues, uh, tenancy issues, mm -hmm. but they're not preparing wells. And you will refer to the, that organization? Yes. Uh, anyone who, who has that need? Oh, they can call directly. They can call okay. the uh, Reading Elder Services. They have the number. Mm -hmm. We try to direct people to um, they, mm -hmm. this um, pro bono legal services, but right. this, not making uh, excuses for if if legal services opened up to making wills and other directives, they it, would be <laughs> overwhelmed. Oh, yeah, I'm sure, sure they, they would. Just yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So kind of to that end, the utilization of services, yep. and, I, and I'm new to this. I haven't heard your presentation before, so I'm going to keep asking a couple of questions. Happy to stay. Happy to stay. Um, so how do people qualify? So we have 508 residents yep. that utilize the services. Right. And is that needs-based? And how do, you, how do you arrive at those 508 being able to right. take advantage of services? Okay, so of the 508, you can see that in, in different areas that, for example, 438 people call this. They can get information and advice, in, which includes, if they wish, a visit. So we'll have somebody come out and sit down with you and do essentially mm -hmm. uh, listen to your needs, talk about some options, and essentially present you with care plan. No cost. We don't ask you your income. The only reason we would ask a family their income is to, and we'll explain this to them, is to determine are you, might you be eligible for public funding. The person mm -hmm. said, I don't want to give you any information about that. That's fine. We, we'll do we'll do that. And but we, if they were seeking public funding, then you'd counsel them as the you know, by exactly. getting the. And we, we would try to say the reason, and we would tell people the reason we we're asking for that is to help you try to qualify. It could be for SNAP benefits. It could be for fuel assistance. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to try to help people connect to the programs that they need that might not be within Mystic Valley, but it's going to help them right. live a better quality of life. Got it. Um, Dan. See. Yeah, there are a number of uh, social service organizations. I belong to one. It's the Society of St. Vincent de Paul from mm -hmm. our, our local church. We're kind of the feeder groups. We, we go out and meet with a lot of the disaffected. What additional things can we be doing if we had, we can muster the funding that would uh, kind of help us help you yep. help people? <laughs> um, transportation is always an issue. Mm -hmm. um, we all do the best we can, the council and agent, we do. Uh, others, it's always that's always a challenge getting people to where they need to go. Uh, and we have a what we have a trip. We, we're trying a new model and where we're actually creating uh, a model that has been worked in other places in the country where we essentially will give people a small amount of money scholarship essentially to and say to them, if you can get a neighbor or you can get your own volunteer, what you rather than just say to someone, can you take me? Can you take me? You can say, gee, Dan, if you're going down the store, could I hit? Could I hook up? hitch a ride with you, and I can give you a couple of bucks for that. And so what we're doing is actually giving people those scholarship. Yep. It's kind of a new idea. It's a big twist, and for okay. some people it's kind of out there. But it, but for some You're people... You're outsourcing it at a, at a lower yeah. rate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> but but it, it's meeting a need. Mm -hmm. and, and we don't say to people, and the other thing that we liked about the model, and we're testing this out, is that we don't... If somebody says, I'm having a problem getting transportation. Mm -hmm. Rather than most organizations, including our own, say, we will take you to this hospital, or mm -hmm. we'll take you to this grocery store, or we will, do, we will take you for cancer treatments, but we're not going to do that. We say, we don't care where you're going to go. You may want to go see a friend in a nursing home. You may want to go to the mall. That's up to you. And so we're trying to give people enough control over the, the modest amount of money they get to right. use that as they say fit. Mm -hmm. And that way it takes out the whole, are you deserving for this trip or not? So. We're trying to do different things. To answer your question directly, so transportation is one okay. of them. 
I think the other thing that we've been trying to do more of is to, is to bring services to people. So um, one of the things that we've been doing successfully and beginning to, to bring this further north, if you will, is essentially creating mini food pantries mm -hmm. in <clears throat> elderly housing projects. So we, I haven't talked to Lynn White about this, so I, I don't want to get too far ahead, but for example, in some of the communities we're doing down in, in the Mall in Medford, uh, Medford area and in Melrose, we actually have 13 mini food pantries, mm -hmm. I'm going to call them, that are, that are housed at elderly high-rise buildings. Okay. So, you know, one of the things we're hearing is that people, like, you know, a fixed income, they're, they're struggling, and there might be a food pantry at a church or, or somewhere else, but they have to, mm -hmm. how do you get there? How do you carry the bags home? That sort of thing. Yeah, plus I think in Reading they have to go through uh, elder services or human services to right. get right. okay to go to the food pantry. And yeah. maybe, maybe we need to have a facility well, at yeah, Tannerville. And, and again, yeah. we have Gene and, and Gene and I have talked about it, but these, these are the kind of things we're trying to think of as, as we move forward. How do, we, how do we bring services cost effectively to where people can actually access them? Mm. Thank you. Mm. Uh, what is your age threshold? For elderly, is it 60 plus? Great question, 62 and I should have probably jumped right into that. Yeah. We, we've we're Mystic Valley Elder Services, but the, the world of caregiving now, I think, and this is a good thing even at, at a, from a national level on down, is we're trying to get a wage from age based programs. The yep. funding still is that it's still channeled on age based, right. so primarily mm -hmm. 60, but mm -hmm. not exclusively. And I say that because we have programs, for example, we just did a great project over at uh, Reading Elder Serve, over at the Senior Center where we had a dementia tour. I don't know if you heard about that, that uh, we just did, did yeah. tonight. And, um, you know, what, people under 60 get Alzheimer's disease. Yeah. And it can be really a tragic situation for caregivers. So, for example, we can provide services to people under 60 years of age who have a diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease. We're also now working with what they call one care programs, which are insurance programs that are designed to provide a full package of services for people who are both what they call duly eligible. That means mm -hmm. a person who is mass health eligible and on Medicare disability. Mm -hmm. And that so they're on Medicare and Mass Health. So their age is really immaterial. It's right? immaterial. Mm -hmm. And so as we think about what do people need to live successfully in the community, it becomes less an age issue and more of a disability issue, if you will. And so we're beginning to open up more programs to people under 60. Group Adel Foster Care was another one. Okay. But primarily with 60, 60 and over. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Pleasure to be here, and we appreciate your support. It's great appreciation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, I think that that moves us to the authorization for the borrowing for the library project. Yeah, there's a motion there. Let me describe a little what's going on. Okay. Yeah, we'll yeah I have it already. Uh, we'll go back and we'll okay. go to the town meeting and whatnot. Um, right now, the library, as I mentioned, bids are open tomorrow. Um, knock on wood, I'm assuming the project's uh, going to go fine. Uh, we're going to borrow approximately February 1st for uh, some large amount. Uh, depending when construction starts, if it goes as aggressively and as quickly as, as it can and it doesn't snow at all, uh, we could actually run short of state funding before we borrow. Mm -hmm. And the absolute worst case is $2 million. Um, there's no guarantee we'll even need to borrow at all, depending on how construction goes. But I'd like to ask you to authorize up to $2 million so that if we do need it, we have that and we don't have to call a special mm -hmm. meeting or something. And just so you know the mechanics, um, an internal borrowing is simply uh, taking money that's in the bank and putting it towards the project and not charging the project interest. You put a big so IOU in the bank you account. You do. So yeah. in a sense, you're hitting your interest income possibly because you're not earning interest. Not earning right. But the amount of interest we're well, earning these say, days, I wouldn't interest? really worry about it. <laughs> but this avoids having to issue bans on anticipation of it. does. Okay. And, what, and how long was that anticipated uh, again? If the soonest we would have to use this is sometime in November, and that's not, probably not going to happen, but it could. So I'd say um, 10 weeks, November hmm. to February 1st. Got it. Okay. Make a motion? Yeah. Yes, please. Move the Board of Selectmen authorize the Treasurer to borrow internal funds for the library building project up to a maximum of $2 million. In order to temporarily bridge any funding gaps between permanent borrowing for the project and project costs incurred. Second. 
there a second? Second. Kevin? Any discussion? All right, all those in favor? Let's go zero. Okay. Preview of the January 15th town meeting. Mm -hmm. Let me look first at the warrant. Whoops, wrong one. Um, and then let me get into a discussion about the charter. There's so many warrants, it's uh, easy I, to get I, them Which one? I had to start doing the April one yesterday. So many town meetings, so little time. <laughs> I mean, it's like the best way to go through it, right now we have 12 articles on the January draft town meeting warrant mm -hmm. and seven of them relate to the charter. Okay. So to give you some background, and, and I do want to go into some detail with the charter so you really have a good understanding of what's going yes. on. Last night was the public hearing, possibly because of Summer Ave, maybe something else was more interesting. We had a grand total of two people come, and I think one might have been lost. <laughs> 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 So we have, uh, let me pass around copy, some extra copies. From I think Pleasant night. Street. Skim yeah. yeah. oh, I think we have, I think we have that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. um, this is the version we looked at last night. I've actually worked on it today to reflect. Is this the one we have in our packet? Yeah. Yes. This, yeah. Okay. So I'm going to put a date we'll go on through it. That. But in general terms, we're going to go the, through uh, this page by page? No. Uh, maybe. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> some of it's really easy. Oh, yeah. Um, the first warrant article for the charter will be the bulk of the charter changes that I'm going to go over tonight. Mm -hmm. But there are some right. things that are he's, beyond he's the, the power man. of the charter committee to do. So there's five or six or seven warrant articles that will be individual articles that will be asking for a uh, legislative uh, special act. So there's certain ones, and I'll go over them all, if town meeting approves the article, it then goes to the legislature when we're asking them to pass that charter change as a special act. Um, the bulk of the charter changes that go to town meeting, if approved by January 7th, which would be a three-night town meeting, can then go on the ballot in April for the local election. So that's so the sort of a two-avenue approach mm -hmm. being yep. considered, uh, and I think it makes sense. Um, and it turned out there was more articles needing a special act than we originally thought. We thought there might be two, and I'll go over them all. Um, they're all very specific. The things that generally have to do with elections that this body does not have the power to change. Mm. Let's see. Um, just so you get a color-coded sort of translation here, uh, red is things that the Charter Committee has formally voted to change. Uh, blue crossed out is things that they've formally voted to delete. And green is things they have not yet voted on that either myself or often town council has suggested that they do. And they are going to meet next Monday and hope to vote a final charter, if you will, subject to then town council review. Um, so, you know, I, I'll skip past this. We'll just go right into the body of it. Preamble, nothing big deal, adding the word Massachusetts. There is quite a lot, as Marcy is quite familiar with wordsmithing going on here. Mm -hmm. um, there's not as much rearrangement as in the zoning, but there are some words <laughs> changed. So I'm going to just kind of go through this, and, and until I get to really what I think is a significant change, I'll, I'll point it out, but it's just a lot of word. Um, one question that came up, and, and town council is obviously new to the, to the scene, and he is, has asked me a lot of intent questions. Um, for instance, when we have an inter-municipal inter agreement with Wakefield to share the appraiser, I don't approve that, you do. So we thought to clarify 1-6, um, it's really acting through a, the Board of Selectmen that any kind of an intergovernmental agreement is reached. And I certainly agree with that, and I'm assuming that you still want to do it that way. There is a term, uh, Chief Executive Officer. Um, generally speaking, that is the Board of Selectmen in Reading. In other towns, it could be the town manager, it could be the board of selectmen. Uh, in Reading, it's the board of selectmen, but then the board has historically delegated a, a fair number of those responsibilities. So just keep that in the back of your mind as, as I discuss this. Um, the first uh, issue uh, is two sections that need to go as a special act, 2-2 two, two and 2-3. Two, first is realignment of precincts. Um, me, there's nothing in there that's critical in terms of a change, but you just can't change anything under a charter committee. Mm -hmm. So there's no, um, there's no intent, there's no meaning changed. It's really just clarification and, and wordsmithing. And Marcy, somebody on the charter committee picked up on your three words, and they use those as, as their mantra. Which, oh. <laughs> yes, I knew you'd like that. Um, 
two three town meeting membership there was a lot of discussion about do we really need to blow up and restart town meeting every ten years is that really necessary uh, eventually they thought it was okay um, yeah but there, there was a lot to of redistrict about you mean that. yeah yeah you almost have to because the lines change yeah Oh, you're going to know who's still eligible yeah. and who isn't. Yeah. Um, so, again, it's very minor wording changes that's, that's turned mm -hmm. out to be no intent, um, with one exception, and I think you'll find this interesting. Right now, in the event of a tie, the uh, winning position is determined by ballot position. So if you're an incumbent, you're listed higher, and you're in a tie, you win. If you're alphabetically higher than, and you're all a bunch of write-ins, you win. That's the current charter. Oh, I don't like that. They don't like that at all. <laughs> oh, wow. Neither does town council. Mm -hmm. I think I lost on a tie like that once. Neither do I. I I'm quite certain I would yeah. always lose on those ties <laughs> yes, with a yes, W. Yes, <laughs> so the suggestion is yeah, for all, all ties to go to a precinct <laughs> meeting, to, meeting to be decided. Yep. Yep. We had a lot of discussion about that. It sounds like a good idea. But you can imagine a situation where this could get very complex. It could, yes. So we're just going to mm -hmm. hope for the best and say that this will work out fine. So we're not going to change it? Well, we can't. We have to ask the state. So this will go as a separate warrant article to town meeting. If town meeting approves it, we'll ask the legislator to pass a special act to change our charter to allow this to happen. So sections 2.2 and 2.3 cannot be done under the purview of a charter committee. Okay. You would have to form a charter commission to do that. Or petition the state legislature. So that, that's one of the fundamental questions, and, and the committee's wrestled with it for nine months. Um, and I think they've come to a sensible conclusion, which is, generally speaking, relatively minor issues, whether you think this tie is a minor issue or not, I kind of do, um, can be decided by the state. The state may approve it, they may not. If they say, no, that's beyond the purview of what we should be doing for you, you've got to have a charter commission, they might say that. I don't think they will mm -hmm. on anything we're going to present to them. But if a charter commission had been formed by town meeting instead, that would have been a two to three year process and a lot more intense, um, which is hard to imagine. Yeah. Let's see, uh, town meeting sessions. Uh, the next special act is 2-5, nomination procedures. And uh, just, just a, maybe this yeah. might be a nit, uh, sure. top of page seven, third paragraph. Seven, seven, uh, yeah. The red, it's a certification of the election by the town clerk. Why were the of their successors words struck? That seems to be an important part of that sentence. I don't, I don't see where you are. Uh, see where it says certification of the election by the town clerk. Third paragraph on page seven. In the box. Yeah, okay. it does seem like of their successors the box. should Why be on, don't I see on there. Uh, where you are. Yeah, it starts out after the revision of precincts, the term of office of all previously oh, okay. elected from shall cease upon the certification of election by the town clerk of whom? That, that well, that's you have, is, th is this the one, did you work on, on this post? Because we don't have what you have up there. I was going to say, these are things the town council has, since I sent it to you on Thursday, he's, has changed. He's got the whole oh, paragraph. Oh, right now, that that's reading. Struck. Oh, everything is oh, struck. Oh, and instead where, it's... Where are we? Uh, what, Oh, I'm sorry. Page seven, but if you look, don't don't look on yours because what Bob has yeah, up there is. There are a couple is, changes. Is this so different? Is this anything this, that's different from what you have is yes. in green, but Does not this everything. Correspond to what's there. Uh, just so we're it's looking at. Uh, this, this is what what different from this, this too. What you got? Yeah. Oh, All right. Okay. So this, this, you haven't printed it yet. That's fine. Right. All right. I won't do okay. that. <laughs> uh, let's see. What's nominated? Sorry. And this version, where where is this version, Bob? Uh, only here. Okay. Yeah. Um, this is the version that will go up on the website probably tomorrow mm -hmm. and be sent to the committee on Monday, except I might wait another day for town council. Uh, to are we allowed to weigh in on some suggestions? Absolutely. Can, okay. can you send it to way. us also I will. in addition to sure. what goes out on the, on the yeah, website? That would be helpful. That would be really sure. helpful yeah. because, yeah, I do, yeah, I, I, I do yeah, better well, if I especially if this is, if our paper is out of date. It's yeah, a little right. bit. Paper's it's not much. Out of date. But just, this is, these are things that have happened since last night, basically. Wait, we've basically been keeping. I got the 1 a.m. emails. <laughs> so, yeah. I was going to say we've been keeping Ray busy between this and the, right. and the zoning. <laughs> uh, two five is another thing that's a special act, and the only suggested change was to change from 28 to 35 days. Oh. And 35 mm -hmm. days is consistent with state law, but we can't even change our charter to be consistent with state law, oh. other than through a special. <laughs> other than through a special committee. I get it. Um, yeah. Same with vacancies. That pertains to elections. So this is where you kill off the old tie vote uh, section and it was moved to another section. 
Which which section is that? This uh, this is two six vacancies. Okay. Another discussion that the that the group had was uh, the importance of residency. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, where they came down so far is it's essential for town meeting. Yes. Period. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They haven't yet formed an opinion or, or come to a conclusion on is it essential to be a volunteer on another board or committee? Resident as opposed to a registered voter. You mean you don't right now. We have at least one one non-resident who's on a board or committee. In Toronto. Yes, we just that's allowed. Mm -hmm. You don't have to allow that. That's up to the charter to say. Right. But so far they haven't. It's silent. They had a lot of discussion, okay. but they haven't uh, suggested to change that yet. Okay. But town meeting, they felt very strongly that has to be someone who has residence in the town. Mm -hmm. Period. Makes total sense. Right. And uh, mm -hmm. you know, if you move to North Reading for uh, you know a year for your house being re redone or something, you're out. If you're not a resident of Reading, mm -hmm. right, you're out. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. And there was a lot of discussion about the oath of office, and you can imagine which charter committee member led that discussion, oh, named Bill Brown. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, a new section got added by town council called precinct meetings, and this is apparently a deficiency in the past where mm. it really should have come out and stated that a chair and a clerk are elected for each precinct, and mm -hmm. it really was done as practice, as practice, but never in the charter. Um, That's uh, been one of those common mm. knowledge things. Right. You have to. Uh, <laughs> We've tried to put some of those in writing. <laughs> That's good. Bob, the language that at any precinct meeting, a majority of the town meeting members of the precinct shall constitute a quorum. Does that mean the full complement of town meeting members or those who, who seats are currently filled, excluding any vacancies? The latter, ex uh, currently filled, excluding vacancies. All right. Is that clear enough to state? Uh, let's see. Uh, I guess they're, not, this if they're not filled, they're not a town meeting member, I yeah, guess. So, um, okay. Uh, majority is a really important concept yep. that runs through this, too, and yep. we'll talk about that. Um, the, the concept for town meeting and for precincts is that those present need to be a quorum. Mm -hmm. A majority right. is a majority of those present. That's how we've always done it, and that's what the Charter has always said. Yep. Uh, later on, we'll get into a discussion about what is a majority of the Board of Selectmen. And there's some really interesting di divergent opinions on uh -huh. uh, the charter committee on that. Hmm. Currently, it's the currently it's the full it's elected the, board. It's it's n plus it's a half plus one right. of the full board, whether yes. seated, whether vacant, doesn't matter. Uh -huh. If there's that many members, you take half and round up, and that's that's the mm -hmm. that's the majority vote. So I'll, I'll give you an example. And the selectman and majority vote is always three or more. Mm -hmm. yep. There is some discussion with the Charter Committee to change that so that it's a majority of those present. So you need three to have a quorum. Mm -hmm. So it could be a two-to-one vote that approves something. And then if that happened and someone was participating remotely, their vote would not count? That's a different question I'd better not get into right now. Well, but I mean, that's, it's, um, that, that has to play in when you're yeah. talking about this. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because they're not. Well, because because they are aware of that, we know that people travel. Mm. Oh, yeah. and People on this board know, travel do. <laughs> and need to be able to participate remotely, and right. so I, I caution them. I, I don't have a strong opinion about this, other than I, I don't think it's broken now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I did caution them that just as an example, a five-member board, two are absent. There's an issue that the board is known to be divided three to two on whatever it is. It's not on the agenda. Two are absent that are on the three side. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, the other two can put it on the agenda that's by true. a two-to-one vote and take action on it. Yeah, that's. And if it's a short-term thing that can't be undone by the next meeting, then you've got a problem. Now, mm -hmm. if a board or committee acted that way, you have more problems than the issue. But, <laughs> but that's entirely but possible. There have yeah. been boards that are like that. Yes. This board is not like that, fortunately no. enough. But there are boards mm. that, that this, are like that. So. This current board is not like that. <laughs> yeah. So well, they're struggling with the issue of what is a majority. Mm -hmm. Back to that. Mm -hmm. um, the general powers and duties was deemed as not a important. Another talk, but topic that we beat to death over several months is what types of boards and committees are there? What types of groups of volunteers are there? I think we finally settled and I think the group is happy with just calling boards or committees as a generic term meant to be any group of volunteers. Could be elected, could be appointed. Um, there's going to be no such thing if the charter passes as written as an ad hoc committee or a standing committee of or a subcommittee. All those different words that don't legally have any real meaning unless you define it. Mm. What, what town council has said is, and, I, and I'll go through some of the sections, 
uh, when a board sets up another body, another board, it should define if it has a sunset. It mm -hmm. should define if it's meant to s do a specific purpose for a period of time, like we've always had ad hoc. The Board of Selectmen have always treated ad hoc as one year specific purpose could be extended for another year, and that's mm -hmm. what the Charter has said. Mm -hmm. um, this gets away from that construct and just says, and you'll, you'll be interested later, more than Board of Selectmen can set these up now by the uh, proposed uh, language here. So you'll see. <laughs> um, but the point is, you will no longer have to decide what kind of a committee it is, but you can determine its length, and Town Council very strongly supports having sunset clauses on all boards you create. Yep. Mm -hmm. Period. Because you can always renew it. Yep. So, and, you know, the shorter the better. One year is too short, three years might be just right. So, I thought that was... And is that something he's suggesting that we do with existing? Uh, no reason you couldn't, but let me go through, because there's different kinds of boards that the Charter Committee has sort of divided this up to. Okay. Um, Finance Committee, the only change is one requested by the Finance Committee, which some of you are probably familiar with. Right now is a three-year term limit, which is thought to right. be nine years, but if you do a partial term, it's really six years plus the remainder of a term. Um, this gives a little more flexibility if you're joining a partial term to then do three full terms after yeah, that. Yeah, that's fair. Mm -hmm. um, nothing else there was important. Uh, bylaw Committee, nothing was important. Mm -hmm. um, the old language did sort of bother me where it appeared that only the bylaw committee could sponsor bylaw articles. And that's clearly not the case. The Board of Selectmen have sponsored many of them. So we just cleaned up <coughs> the language to make sure it was clear that mm -hmm. the bylaw committee can sponsor them or they can vote on them or both. Yeah. I always thought of them more as an advisory board to town meeting. Yes. So would this be the point in time that we would try and sort of maybe create a little more direction for the bylaw committee well it would be so that it's not just um, I have a personal opinion and I would like to use this yeah. public platform to state my public opinion as and, part of this bylaw committee arguing about that and the two <laughs> members on the bylaw committee also on the charter committee um, and, and they they freely admit the difference of opinion on the bylaw committee on that question mm -hmm. as well as the charter committee and town council has says the same difference of opinion exists in every municipality in the state. Um, he said there's extremes at each end and there's people in the middle. There's no right answer. There's no wrong answer. It's definitely personal taste. Um, the one thing that the bylaw committee um, understands now maybe a little more clearly than, than five or ten years ago is when they speak at town meeting, they should be careful to describe whether they're speaking as a bylaw committee member or as a town meeting member. Mm -hmm. So sometimes in the past, bylaw committee members have clearly stated personal opinions, mm -hmm. um, which were not necessarily under the bylaw umbrella. Mm -hmm. but, but that's a tough line to define. Mm -hmm. There's not agreement on bylaw committee members or where that line's drawn. Everyone thinks differently. So the discussion that the Summer Ave article had uh, with the bylaw committee, in, in my estimation, and I think everyone in the room would agree, went far afield of a bylaw discussion. Right. Because it was an hour or an hour. 15 minutes. It was a town meeting, mini yeah. town meeting presentation. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, the two presenters, I think, found it very helpful. Mm -hmm. And I didn't see any harm in letting them do it. But they all recognized the fact they were straying beyond the bounds of the bylaw while they did it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And past bylaw committees may not have recognized that. So I thought that was good, at least. So, by all means, if you have opinions, you don't know how to solve the issue mm -hmm. with words. It's, it's definitely a discussion point. Uh, let's see. Uh, go back so to uh, two, 213, 214, it, the uh, Warren, Warren, Warren articles. articles. Okay, let's see. Uh, no changes, just uh, two selectmen still. All right, I, I think there's been some discussion on this board of, mm -hmm. this is under 213, subparagraph A? Yep. Of making that three or more members of the board of selectmen, as long as we have a five-member board uh, that it should be a majority placing warrant articles on the name of the board. Uh, does the board want to uh, assent to that or discuss that? Why do we want to do that? Well, we have had we a have recent clearly example. talked about that. Yeah. In, you know, not long ago, right. actually. Mm -hmm. um, I, I personally think it's a good idea, but what impact do we have on this 
Charter Committee. We can weigh in with you our comments. You can give your opinion. I can state it on Wednesday, Monday, and they can <laughs> either agree with it or disagree with it. I don't think they've given this any thought. No, I don't um, think so either. And especially if it's a question of the board. I've mentioned that that's been the yeah. practice of the board. And, and honestly, as a courtesy, the board often sponsors articles that all five may not agree with. Well, and I think, and, and, and that actually and is part of the reason why I think maybe this doesn't deserve to be taken off is because it's a, it is a way for residents to bring their thoughts ahead. But they have, and a, to but put they them have on. a petition. Marcy, they have a petition route. Well, I to can go tell here. you historically what's happened as, as someone who's, who's presented some of those petitions. What's happened in the past huh. is members of the board have said, oh, it's a, this is a petition thing. You, sh you, shouldn't, you should not vote for it. So there's a little bit of a. Well, um, we could take a position. Yes, that, that's way. happened yeah. in the past. Where well, the members of the board of selectmen have gotten up and gone, well, this is a petition. This is not a petition to put a warrant on. Right. So we're, we don't think you should vote for it. But my concern so. is, and I've always said this, and I think it's true that uh, when there's an alternative method of, of getting a petition, I know that's a difficult hurdle, but having the selectmen sponsor an article always implies endorsement for the article. You can't get away from that. It's in the eyes of town meeting. They see board of selectmen at the end of the article. They're presuming this has had some degree of at least discussion and agreement by at least the majority of that board. Uh, and the reason that given I that there are alternatives for putting forth anything as a courtesy, and, and it's it's it's, it's, it's actually slope. not easy to put something on the warrant as a petition. You you have to you have to actually know about it quite a while in advance. So there's quite a lead time to get it on to warrant consideration. You have to get exactly the right form. We're built for process, not form. for speed, necessarily. I'm, I'm just saying yeah. It, it, yeah. it is just something that, so. uh, you know, I, I would personally not be inclined to make the change right now on this. And what I would suggest is that maybe we discuss this one again as a board when John is here and, and, and all five But in time enough here. to make some inputs to this. Yeah. I don't yeah. want to let oh, this no. opportunity go by. Right. final for... When do we close the warrant, Thomas? Uh, and I'm hoping December 2nd, maybe oh, December there's 9th. there's plenty of time. I agree yeah. with that. So, so that, I mean, yeah, that's um, fair. and that way, you know. I just want to flag be better that. better if we were all yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I think agree so. with that. Okay, um, fair enough. I just want to make one comment and make sure you know that in 213, it has in, and shall remain that it says the Board of, Select, of Selectmen shall place. You don't have an option. If any of those things are met, yeah, you I know. are that's the sponsor of the article, whether you right. like it or not. So I agree with the optics. I try to put in a little disclaimer about the votes, and you don't always agree with articles. But you're right. The optics are there. But that's what the charter says you must do. And we must put it on even if it's imperfectly written in the eyes of town council, although uh, we try to no. head that off. No? Uh, no. If town council says it's improperly drawn, then it you, can't you be aren't put allowed on. to close it on a Okay. If it's not prime proper form. So is this the place that we have a discussion about a situation we had not long ago? And when John gets here, we'll do that. <laughs> okay. I mean, I, it's less about the two thing and more about the, um, you know, if we had, if we recently had a warrant, and that warrant. Um, I, but I want to, I really do want us to have this discussion when John is yeah. here. And so that we all have the same discussion. Okay. And I, I just think that that's I, fair. Um, okay. It's, and, and, it's and not this, about the two thing. Yeah. It's about it's a question I have about the warrants. Just a general information question. Really doesn't have to be discussed, oh, but okay. I'm, I'm looking for a point of information since we're sort of on sort top. Sort of on topic, okay. okay. And that point of information was I had the understanding that recently when we did have something go on, if it hadn't gone on it, it short circuit the entire Dan, you explained to me from a parliamentary standpoint. Oh. It would have shut down all of the warrants because I lambasted my two uh, fellow committeemen who abstained on the, the vote to close the warrant, saying mm -hmm. we would not be having a town meeting had had there not been a third prevailing vote on that motion. Mm -hmm. I yeah. think it was four zero one ultimately. No, 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 it was three zero two. No, it was. It was. It was three zero two. Three zero two. Is that what you remember? It was three zero two. I remember it well. Yes. It was amended. Mm -hmm. It was three during zero the voting it was three process. Zero two, but it ended up yeah. like one of these, oh, I better vote, 401. No, no, that know. was Dan that did the, oh, okay. I better vote, not. 
I mean to close the warrant. Oh, to close the warrant. No, I think John did vote to close it, but I then. I think John abstained from closing the I'm talking about John, John, John Arena. Yeah, but I, I, I think he, John Arena may have closed it, and then. The, the, and the, but he abstained I recapitulated on, the other. On, on your right to put the arc on when you yeah. pointed out this rule of two. Yeah. And I said, you're right. That's what it says. So but, I'm, I'm happy to yeah. bring this all into a discussion. Yeah. But yeah. I, I got to say this out loud so he, that we don't lose this because, you know, I mean, I. I voted a certain way with unintended consequences. Sure, yeah. right. Okay. okay. And that's, so, why, that's why you're forgiven. Uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, I still felt very strongly about right. the way I was voting. Right. However, mm -hmm. the unintended consequence could have been Could have been bad. Disastrous. Right. Yes. Could have been worse. Yes. Um, I, the so, charter says you have to have a town meeting. I'm not sure what would happen, what the penalty is. If you didn't close the warrant. <laughs> What would you well, be if you don't close the warrant, warrant. Usually we, well, we maybe usually we all go to jail. I don't know. Time in case something happens, but it, not always. No. So that might have made the, the next week. Right one done it again. Maybe. <laughs> so when we talk about this, when John's here, yeah, let's really talk about sure. that piece I don't as want to well. lose right. mm -hmm. that piece. Yeah, right. I need to Good understand point. that better, and yep. I think we need to get it written in a way that we do not end up with when somebody votes their conscience and unintended consequences, you know, some bad happens you know to the whole legislative process right. which right. isn't good mm -hmm. well when it says shall be placed on a warrant that implies there's a right. duty to close a warrant right <laughs> i think yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, under referendum you'll recall that the town meeting did change some of john arena's changes uh i don't remember a year or two ago those have never gone to the voters. Um, I'm the one that asked it not to because I knew this process was ongoing. And sure yep. enough, mm -hmm. the town council has suggested wording changes to what the town meeting previously approved. Which, that was, that um, was so where? this the stuff in brown. Oh, okay, that's the stuff we don't have. Oh, okay. that, we yeah. don't have that. I, yeah. Uh, well, th this right here no, we do. was previously approved by town meeting. Okay, so which page did you just jump to? Um, on, I'm 12. on page 12. Right. Oh, yep. okay, on page 12. <clears throat> And just, just to point out, the town council has suggested some changes to something town meeting already approved. So we'll mm -hmm. just have them reapproved them all over again. Mm -hmm. um, I don't see any significant changes here. Um, one kind of a nuance on this bottom of page 12, um, which I'm sure none of us have really thought of. That's why we're not town council. Think of the uh, meals tax uh, recall vote, recall election, whatever it's called. Um, you had to get 20% turnout right. in order for the vote to count. Mm -hmm. It was only one question, so it was fairly simple. What if there had been two questions? Oh. The way the thing was worded, well. it was a voters who turn up. You need to have a majority to win. I think it's ballots taken. Now yeah. it's cast ballots. Just yeah. put in there explicitly. Oh, okay. It didn't used to be there, so it okay. actually could have been a very yep. bad unintended yep. consequence. Yep. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Any discussion on the threshold of 20? They thought that was fair given um, our town elections. They thought that was tough, but they thought it was fair because town meeting is elected to represent the people. When our turnout is far, why, why can't they set that at the average turnout rather than 20, maybe? They, they wanted to have a high hurdle. And they thought huh? 20 was fair. Yeah. Um, you know, for a local election, 20 is a high hurdle. So, no question. So, so above this, where, where they've taken out the electronics, so the state doesn't allow us to have the town clerk give out an electronic version? Uh, where are you, Marcy? Um, oh, here it is. It's the, it's the blue Still there. Still struck. Hmm. Right. The state does not allow it? Right. I thought it was a good idea, but... It is a good idea, but it's... What, so well, they're behind the times. We need we, to get the state to obey. allow that. To we got to obey. <laughs> because yeah. because the problem is it's complex language, and so if you have to yep. get a whole bunch of different signatures, you know, it's... Sure. But you got to come here to get them. That's the, that's the intention. Well, you have to come here to get the... The paper copy, copy or the paper the, cop the copies. But I, I don't understand why, if the town clerk has delivered, like, that, that just, you know. That's one of those things that hasn't caught up yet to the, the reality the of The real life. problem with that, if, if right. it's a one-page um, item, it's fine. Mm -hmm. If it's two pages, by law, it has to be front and back. And you yep. can't do that electronically. You can't guarantee that electronically. Right. Mm, okay. Yeah, you're right. So that's the problem. Because okay. it's set your printer to do that. Um, now we're going to get into some of the discussion about the different committees. Okay. Um, and this is where some things are going to be suggested to change. You can see right away. This is going to um, be the heated discussion? No, not really. The board <laughs> of assessors will, you know, not become elected after uh, after this is approved. Okay. Um, mm. Say that again. The board of assessors will be changed to be appointed by okay. the board of selectmen. Yep. 
Uh, but let me get down to 3-2. Um, this is the sentence the town council just asked me to bring up to you. It says right there, the executive powers of the town shall be vested in the board of selectmen. Mm -hmm. um, I wish I probably should have sent you his email. It's actually quite funny. But he said, in some towns it would be quite a coup if the town manager could get that stricken from, from the charter. And I was thinking, no, that's fine. You guys can do this. Mm -hmm. um, but it's really, I think it's working fine. This is the way it's worded now. Yeah. Um, but it is a point that town government is becoming more complex. But hopefully you have a town manager that can explain to you, look, in this certain part of executive duties, you need to delegate that to me because things move so quickly sure. or change so fast that I'm going to need that flexibility. But just be aware that some towns are moving away from executive powers being vested in the board of selectmen for that reason. Well, they should be vested there but delegable. That's what my opinion yeah. is too. Yeah. But some towns are actually... Just saying, go ahead no. and take Then it. we're going to get back to the multi headed hydra, I'm afraid. Yeah, I don't we think that. we, we, we went through that in the yeah, 70s and 80s. That's why we had the charter. Yeah. Because we had five warring boards trying to decide how to sell John Street, which was oh. <laughs> before it was Walker's Brook Drive. The mm. um, planning board was fighting with the DPW, was fighting with the selectmen, was fighting with whoever. Mm. <laughs> um, the town council has done a really nice job, and I've tried to help in striking as many words out of the document as possible. So there's no need to describe all the, all the duties you have other than your selectman. Everyone yeah. understands what a selectman is. It's in state law. Plus, we have a lot of local documents that might describe more powers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, part of the historical tinge to the charter was this was written 25, 6 years ago when a lot of little silos of power were consolidated under a town manager. Correct. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of political correctness and tips of hats in here sure. that aren't necessary anymore. Okay. So one of them was um, who the board of selectmen, you know, shall appoint. Hmm. Your only important appointments to list are town manager, town yep. council, town accountant, five constables maximum, and then anyone else for whom there's no other method. So yep. there's no reason to list all those things anymore. Yeah, sure. that makes sense. <clears throat> um, there's the thing about you advi doing advisory committees. Um, we'll get to that because they want to uh, change that. Um, this is one of those things where I think your executive power should be desig uh, should be delegated, and it always has been, yep. perhaps not mm -hmm. strictly legally. Um, mm -hmm. You don't want to be the licensing board. You want to delegate that to uh, mm -hmm. the town manager who might informally delegate Paula. <laughs> uh, school, school committee, nothing significant in this section. Um, board of Library Trustees. Oh, just, just one point on the pre previous paragraph uh, under 3-2. Um, in the zoning bylaw redo, do we issue any special permits now? Uh, I don't think so. Do you remember the selectman coming up, Marcy? At what? All? SPS. Are the selectman a special permit issuer at all? I only no. know CPDC and okay. CPA. I don't know C it's we, CPDC. All right, then um, we don't need to have okay, special I permits put in there. Put yeah. in there. Yeah. Licenses and special permits. Deal. You don't have to deal with that. Right. Um, Bob, was there any discussion in regards to the um, six members? of the school committee it was being an even number mm. yes not just the number itself but um, there was especially a lot of discussion when there was only five of them and there was a <laughs> vacant seat and once yeah. they filled it they figured well we better just leave it alone so yeah there was a consideration to move to five just what's the what's the sense of having an even number mm -hmm. yeah I, or even seven or I so know yeah. The, the yeah fact exactly. that they, it was the even number that, uh, that again they figured if the school committee wants a change they should ask us so I asked the superintendent to ask mm -hmm. the school committee they said it's fine leave it alone Okay. So, Fair enough. Uh, let's see. There's really nothing else in this section that's important. Uh, Light Board of Commissioners, you can see it's all just wording, hmm. adding of commissioners and doing some other things. Was there any discussion about the election versus appointment? Or did, was that considered uh, beyond the scope of the There board? was some discussion of changing it to be a department of the town appointed by you yeah. or me. Mm -hmm. um, some of the discussion, but not a lot of it, this is the discussion that was approved, but agreed to be deferred. So there are mm -hmm. some other changes in your document that the committee has formally voted to approve. Nothing really earth shaking. But then they voted later when they saw the disharmony and discord. All right, we're not going to do that this time, but these are our thoughts for the next group, just to pass them along. So they're still open to the idea of an appointed RMLD board? Um, some members of the charter committee absolutely were. Mm -hmm. Some absolutely. What about were not. the library board of trustees being appointed versus um, elected? We discussed that because discussed? we discussed yeah. the assessors, RMLD, and the trustees kind of all together. Yeah. Um, their their final thought, and, and I agreed with them, is if a board doesn't want to change, 
the charter committee is not going to suggest it for now. If someone else wants to come to the charter committee and say, here's the reason it should change, they would entertain that thought. So we did have a discussion about the trustees. Um, the first public hearing sometime last fall was, was well attended at the senior center. There was a number of library representatives yeah, there. That. And that was more heavily discussed then. Right. Uh, and then it just sort of died off and said, no, let's so not. So they didn't it. really revisit it? No, they really didn't. No, mm -hmm. And I didn't urge them to. I said, you know, if you're going to take this on, it's going to be a big battle. Make no mistake about it. Mm -hmm. um, so if you want to, just, just realize that. The trustees yeah, yeah. absolutely no, are going to oppose it. I have it. no illusions about that. No, yeah. thanks. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, let's see, moderator, nothing there. <clears throat> now, those are the elected boards. Here's the appointed boards or committees. I'm not really sure what, why the significance of the order, but um, all Ray did was clean up and make the language as consistent among each board as possible. So you'll see a lot of changes, but there's really not a lot of meaning there. Um, there's the Board of Assessors being added in, so appointed by the Board of Selectmen, yep. same idea, three, yep. three year terms, one a year. So, so in, oh, in, mm -hmm. it, that third one down says the elected Do members? they goof and still so, leave it? So let's say the charter is passed by oh, this our, our voters yeah. in April. This is yep. the transitional. We have oh. to have an April yeah. election, so there'll be three sitting elected oh, members. Okay. So yeah. this is the transition. Got to read okay. the whole thing. I, I didn't do it either. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah. this this allows them to sit to the end of their term should they yes. choose. Yeah, Correct. and there's a lot of transition. It allows you to then reappoint them should they choose to want to be appointed as okay. opposed to they got to leave. Fair enough. Okay. Is there a term? Three years. No no term limits. Only FinCom has term limits and something the state does. I think it's the Cultural Council, is it? Yeah. Did they talk about doing term limits at all? In the trial? Not seriously, no. Um, yes, in conjunction with FinCom, and should anyone else have it, or should FinCom have it? And um, surprisingly, FinCom, I asked them one night, they, they were in favor of term limits. I think they gave them an out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I'm not sure. There was FinComs in the past that would have said no to that. But so the Charter Committee didn't think that term limits were a good idea at all, except um, for They assumed FinCom. that the appointing authority should figure that out themselves. And we have. <laughs> and we do. So why, you know, if you can't figure it out yourselves that there yeah. should be a term limit, why should the Charter help you? That's I true. Honestly, think oh. that's the philosophy. Well, I, well I, I we don't have the ability to... Um, well, if you're appointing... We have the ability not to reappoint. Sure. Right. right. Mm -hmm. And, and we we'll get to that because there's a... Very different right. section on removal. Uh, okay. 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 All right. Uh, let's but, see. Uh, just to add to that, I, I've never been a big fan of term limits on volunteer boards that aren't being paid, uh, but the FinCom makes good sense, I think. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to do anything to hamper just with artificial limits, people's ability to, or desire to serve. Except for the fact that um, what's, what's ha happened historically is if someone is on a board, mm -hmm. They are automatically reappointed. That's and not happening not, anymore. Have you I'm noticed? I'm just saying it. That's the way it's historically <laughs> happened, and it, and it's actually contributed to. A well, shame on that appointing board for not being more I thorough. Agree. <laughs> I've, I've just dashed through a whole lot of committees because I really don't think there's any significant right. change. Mm -hmm. um, but the, here's the next set of changes: is they they have decided to formally add mm. um, Forest Committee, Historical Commission, and, sh and and a new Charter Review Committee. Oh. Oh my gosh. And this is the point at which I should tell you the meaning of being in this section. Section 3 elected, that's pretty obvious. Yeah. If these boards that are listed in the charter under Section 4, they are by definition, they will exist, mm -hmm. period. That does not mean the appointing authority has to populate them, strangely enough. Mm. Mm. So I didn't like the idea of all these things being listed until I realized, well, if the use for it goes away, you don't actually have to name anyone a member. You don't have to amend but the charter. But then if you want to amend, if you want to get rid of it, you have to future. amend the charter yeah, in the future. I, I would have preferred a much shorter list in this section, yeah. but the charter committee ended up being completely the opposite. Would the list have been maintained under the bylaws of the selectmen? Or it should be somewhere. The bylaws would have been a better place yeah. to do it, I think. Or operating practices or yeah, whatever. But the charter yeah. committee, they talked about each one of these boards and should it be or shouldn't it be, and they felt these boards that are in Section 4 are all essential to the town the makeup of the town they were essential mm. and it's true that you know the one that to me stood out as, as maybe being the most optional if you will is the town forest yeah. committee right but it's not like we're not going to have a town forest right so that's Got the it. thinking and then this other boards or committees section is a big change 
Right now, the Board of Selectmen may appoint or, dissolve or, or other boards. They're suggesting that any elected board can now do that. So the no. school committee, the light board, no longer the Board of Assessors. The light board already set, sets up their own committees. Well, <laughs> so. yeah, and the schools, they, they don't because they can't, but they set up working groups. The superintendent mm -hmm. can set up working groups, yeah. not subject to meeting law, all the way off and follows them. Mm -hmm. What they're thinking is, if you're an elected board, why don't you all have the same rights? And again, forgetting the fact that we don't have anything called standing committees or ad hoc committees, mm -hmm. yeah. if you're elected by the people, you can form any board you want, or give them whatever term you Sounds want, good. give them a purpose. But appointed boards don't have that power. No. no. There was discussion it's only the that. elected boards. Yes. I could only imagine an infinite pyramid. Until every person in this town volunteered for something. <laughs> um, so that was a big change, but I think it worked out more or less. I have okay. a question on the associate membership. Is this a change? Who yes, currently, this, this uh, is all new. Isn't there a currently uh, only one appointed board that elects its own associate members, the what Conservation this does Commission? Is this by charter allows a bylaw to tell you what boards can have associate members? So it by itself doesn't do anything other than allows okay. you to have a bylaw that tells you. So right now, according to state law, um, the Zoning Board of Appeals has associate members and they can vote with very specific rules. And who appoints them? Us, right? Uh, you do. Okay. Yes. And CONSCOM so is different. Mm -hmm. right. Anyone else that has associate members right now are all optional, voluntary, they can't vote. Per this this tells you, yeah. this gives you a method to allow people to vote as associate members if okay. a bylaw gets passed. Okay. So I... I, again, had mixed if, feelings if about this. If well, you look under... Uh, I'm, I think I'm not following this. If you look at the second paragraph. So first of all, it says all... Well, let's take it one at a time. Okay, yeah. all paragraph boards one. Yep. under Article 4, and it also is Article 3 as elected, mm -hmm. uh, may have... No, actually, it's not elected. All appointed boards can have associate members if, if specified in the charter or bylaw. Okay. So that's that's the key. So right now, there's none, other than the Zoning Board of Appeals, but that could change. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Uh, that second sentence is important. About associate members? The, yeah. Because that, that is true. The authority uh, appoints associate members. But currently, does, does not the Conservation Commission appoint its own associate members? No, not that I'm aware of. No, I, I thought it did, and I thought it was the only exception in no. town government. Really? OK. Well, so this will change that. I didn't know they, how do they do it? They've been doing it for years. I don't yeah. think it's legal. <laughs> All right. Well, that, they need to understand that's a change. Okay. Yeah. Because uh, well, they've been doing it. Well, it's not a change it. in the charter. It's <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. That's she said, we've been pointing them? I don't even remember now. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. Oh, okay. Um, I don't know. There's nothing else in here. Yeah. I think that's that sort of shaking other than yeah. that last paragraph's important. You can't vote if you're new to the board. If you're not on for at least mm. six months, they just don't let you vote. Well, I, I do. I like this way this is taken because CPDC is down one member right now. Yes. But they have a very active associate yes. member. Uh, good example. Good example of why this is smart to do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, town manager. Let's see. What did they change? Really not very much. Um, they rearranged it so it looks like it's changed, but. Mm. Um, Can they take the word infallible out here, please? <laughs> What's this, part about the, <laughs> what's this part about the salary goes up 10% every yeah. year? And it's, indexed to, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's indexed to the gas tax. Just joking. Yeah, it's indexed to the gas tax. Right. Uh, this section right here has disturbed some people. It looks like it's new, but that's just moved from another section of the charter. Um, there's nothing in this section that's different, but there is something down here. A couple of things. Um, again, remembering old politics, some of this stuff was stricken. Yeah. So the only important appointments to list, I think, are the police chief and the fire chief because the board of selectmen has to approve of that. And then the appraiser, which is a new appointment, has to be approved by the board of assessors. So those mm -hmm. are the three positions that the town manager just can't say, you're appointed and no one else can say anything about it. Um, and then they, find, they had a really long list here of all kinds of jobs. And I said, that's just silly. There's only three that matter because someone else can say no. Otherwise, just say all other employees. Mm -hmm. other than school department, uh, library trustees, and so forth. So they, they eventually agreed to that. Where does it say that the library board trustees hires the uh, right department here. head? Here? Right, right here it actually says um, board of library trustees appoints the whole staff. That's oh. what this means. 
Uh, there was some discussion about changing that as well, but once they didn't decide to change the elected uh, trustees, they saw there was no point to change anything. And I, I so beg to differ. I said, I said they're two topics. Why yes. shouldn't they be under the, the section well, where the board I said powers this, are? You know, you can elect them or you can appoint them. That's a yeah. fair topic for right. discussion. But, but a whole separate thought is the town manager could appoint the library director subject to confirmation by the trustees, just like those other positions. They just weren't interested. Mm -hmm. So that might be a good one though for us to make a recommendation I would on say a change so. because it doesn't sound like it's going anywhere but no. and then if you did that it would open the question of who appoints library staff because right now the trustees do the whole thing that that's a hot potato <laughs> the trustees appoint they appoint the, the library, library director staff and the, the library one. director parentheses trustees appoint the whole library staff I, I have nothing to do with it Peter it is that the way the state, how does the state law, what does the state is law there any, say? Depends on your charge. Are we li are, aren't we liable for their salary, their oh, benefits, yeah. yes. their well, pension? Town meeting their votes them a budget, but then they decide who is hired and who gets paid. Well, I shouldn't be quite that simple. Um, you do a classification chart and a compensation table that decides right. what their rates of pay are. But they determine fully how many people, how to staff the library, who to staff the library with, how many part-time, how many full-time, subject to the total dollars available by town meeting. So they, they are extremely independent. Is that consistent with other library boards and trustees across uh, the it's state? It's consistent with other libraries, but other towns are much more independent than Reading. The, um, the trustees? Lots of organizations. There's lots of silos in lots of towns. Stoneham. Yeah. Um, you know, their rec committee hires and fires people. There's, mm. there's a lot okay. more autonomy spread out in other towns. Um, Reading is clearly the trend, just yep. because of efficiency. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, but Reading is very much the exception in terms of there's not a lot of that. It's really just the library at this point, and I guess RMLD. But you know, you've got language in here that talks about the police chief and the fire chief. Yeah. Right. I mean, you you select them, but they need to be confirmed by us. Yeah. Doesn't that make more and sense? I, I hire all police and fire and promote all police and fire. And there's no one that says yes or no to that except me or mm -hmm. Peter. Yeah. Um, obviously, it's a communal effort yeah, with the department. Right. But, Always. Um, that's very different than the library. So well, I, I discussed that six, five, six months ago with them, and eventually there was just no point in having the discussion. They just weren't interested. That's inefficient. Hmm. It's a big issue. You know, it's not a small change. Let's see. Um, there was a phrase in here somewhere. The, the town manager is, a, is by all the language in the charter, the chief procurement officer, but it didn't say that, so we thought it should oh. say that. Mm -hmm. um, as it is right now, um, the town manager approves purchases over a certain dollar limit for the school department and the library, for instance. So 25000 I think it is, and up. Um, any school purchase that goes through a contract, I have to approve. But mm -hmm. it's not like I say no. I assume they've all done their work, and I just approve it, honestly. Where, where's the language? You, I remember we, we discussed about the signing of warrants and who, who, who up the chain is responsible um, for that. And it's that, a big thing with RMLD. All their commissioners actually, signing the warrants. That's actually mm -hmm. been struck in here just it last has? night by uh, town oh. council. I'll see if I can find that part. Yeah, so they're not going to sign warrants anymore. I mean, right now, hmm. let's just see if it says it right here. It's kind of an intense legal question. As a practical matter. Mm. I sign all the warrants, as does the town accountant for the right. light department and for everyone else. Correct. Mm -hmm. How much detail do we go into? Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. She does more than I do, mm -hmm. depending on our time available. It could be fairly intense. There's certain things we both look for. But yeah. do we know chapter and verse of this? There's no way. Um, have we found things that we've questioned? Yes. Yeah. But we're not really in a position to make a final call other than to question. Um, I'll give you an example. Um, sometimes overtime runs very high for yes. certain individuals. It certainly does. <laughs> so the town accountant especially questions that all the time. But the individuals worked overtime, they have to be paid. That's the law. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She can't stop that. 
What's the sense in even questioning? Well, they're working for the RML. Well, it's, that's a, <laughs> that is an important thing that, to ask about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So she has, on the record, formally in, inquired, mm -hmm. why did this person work? And she's formally gotten a response. So mm -hmm. she feels that's part of her job. Yeah. Um, you know, this goes back to the earlier discussion. Um, you know, in addition to the two and a half or two odd million, they pay a certain overhead charge for some of our time. And yeah. this is an example of that. Mm -hmm. So they pay five or ten percent of my salary and her salary. I can't remember exactly. Um, you know, the town, this building does a fair amount of work for them. Payroll, you name it. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Benefits. So. Um, and here's a real big change. And I finally understood last night why, because I missed the earlier meetings. Mm -hmm. um, they unanimously and strongly wanted the town manager to appoint a, an ombudsman and not to be it. Mm. And I thought, great, they're looking out for my best interest. They know I'm too busy. That's not it at all. <laughs> <laughs> I should have known. Um, quite candidly, they said in the past, 10 or 12 years ago, the intent was that someone else get the job, not the town manager. And they felt that they didn't want a town manager that could block discussion or issues from circulating. Mm. And by having a second person do it, that second person could go to the town manager and argue someone's case or position or our, our, our item. And if they felt so obliged that the town manager wasn't paying attention, yeah, they, they could come to the board of selectmen. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. So it's like a constituent service. Yeah. Yeah. I guess you'd say. This is a paid position? So this, my thinking is, um, and, and I've known about this thought for a while, is this is the job of the uh, unfilled department head in administrative services. This would be the, pe the person they're involved in communications. It's a natural. This is being part what of the What is that person, though? I mean, it, in the spirit of what they're trying to do, that person reports to you, though. Yeah. Yeah. That person is responsible for making sure the citizens walk away happy, which won't be easy. They decide, with collaboration with me, I'm sure, and others, what issues rise to the town manager's level or not. And that'll be an ongoing learning process. Um, as, as Paula well knows, having served as ombudsman unofficially for many years, <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, you get asked the same question time and time again, and you can just answer it because you remember the answer. Right. Um, when there's a West Street do detour, and by the time the second or third person has asked the question, you know what the answer is. Well, this is the answer. Um, there are sometimes more uh, complex questions, such as the one you got about, uh, you know, a, a poor condition of a house with storage material in the yard. That's a very complicated for to health mm -hmm. question. Um, that's something that would naturally rise, I think, to the level of town manager, no matter what other thing you have in place, mm -hmm. because of its multi-division and complexity. Mm -hmm. But but their thinking really wasn't so much to you know give people you know uh, give the town manager a break from talking to people. It was quite the opposite. It was to give the people yeah. a break and let them be heard, and make sure they were heard, which I thought was interesting. And I will tell you that two superintendents ago made this change on his own with, with some discussion with the school committee, and it was a very hard process for the community to get used to, because they were used to going to Harry. Mm -hmm. And when Pat came along, he said, I've got all these building principles. You go to them first. You come to me through them when you're not happy. And he said, he, I remember him telling me the community took two or three years to adapt to that, because they were not used to that. They were not happy. So this will be a learning process, too. Um, you know, it's not like you're just going to cut it right off, but yeah. right. it's it's partly a question of efficient use of time mm -hmm. too. Right. <clears throat> um, acting town manager again is one of those special acts, and it's I don't particularly like the way they've come down on um, long-term absence, or I'm sorry, a term at the bottom here. But mm -hmm. the point is, changing any of this requires a special act, so it won't be done uh, other than a special article, but. Um, the thing I don't really like um, under vacancy, I, I like the fact they've changed it to 180 days from 120 because, as you know, finding a town manager and appointing them is not a quick thing necessarily. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What I don't like is the 30 days they've put under acting town manager because if you have a vacancy yeah. for 180 mm -hmm. days, you'd have to reappoint the same person five or six times. Mm -hmm. So I don't quite understand the thinking of this. Mm -hmm. Have you asked them? I have, and they haven't really. They said, "Let them come back and be reappointed." I can sort of that see maybe like ninety. That doesn't seem like a very efficient. 
And then no. another 90? 90 and 90 makes a lot more sense. There's a lot of efficiency absence here. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> can, we re can we counter suggest 90 there? Sure. Yeah. yeah that. Type it in. Can we say town council suggested? <laughs> <laughs> town council has always said he'd be happy to suggest things. Okay, good. <laughs> he had to. <laughs> I'm sure he's agnostic on the subject. Let's see. Um, this is kind so, of an interesting so, one. Go ahead. So then the term would need to change to 90 days oh, down yeah, below yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll just make up the, a footnote there. Right. Um, the powers of an acting town manager are limited to routine matters, which is somewhat hard to interpret. But by a major super majority vote of the selectmen, you could give the acting town manager more powers. That, that probably makes sense. You've got someone in the position that's, if you will, not a full town manager. But I have to say, in other towns, uh, Wayne Marquis, who just retired in Danvers, I think he said he was uh, acting town manager for two or three years. Oh, wow. <laughs> or staying for 40 years. <laughs> so, <coughs> I don't know. Things change. Um, nothing else changes. And here's that severance thing that was reloaded. Here's where I had the most success, and I'm very happy with Article 6. All the stuff that nobody understood yeah. has been deleted. <laughs> I asked and asked and asked, and I kept being told it's really important, it's very complex, you can't understand it. But no one could explain it to me, so they finally agreed to delete it. <laughs> no one understood what an administrative code was. It's kind of sad. Um, what this all boils down to is we will have the org chart that you've seen in the past, um, the way it's proposed right now, it has to include uh, the light department and the school department, and mm -hmm. obviously mm -hmm. the rest of town government, yeah. which is a bit of a change, because they are both town agencies. So is this taking out the town town meeting approval requirement? Um, it is, uh, and I'll get back to that. Okay. Um, a year ago, we had to ask the board to put a separate warrant article on to change the table. Yeah. Now the table sh just shall be published in the budget, mm. Mm. and thus approved as part of the budget. Every year, that just made more sense. Yeah. yeah, it does. And with your approval, we can change it during the year if we have to. It's more so you nimble. can see all the stuff easier. that yeah. got deleted I mean, here. Which so it struck me as a yeah, yeah. A wow. rubber stamp anyway. Um, here's some of that historical stuff. They finally agreed to get rid of listing things like the Department of yeah. Public Works and all these historically elected yeah. boards. Mm -hmm. Pay on to the past. So they, they cut it down to <laughs> yeah. um, an overall description and then. It's specific discussion obviously of town council um, and he's cut down the specific list because it's foolish to make specific lists you yes. just say you know duties as needed or whatever. Mm -hmm. and he thought it was important for all of these to add a vacancy clause which mm -hmm. wasn't there in the past town accountant very important um, the only change there was to move the uh, effective date to July from April and that was my suggestion, and I didn't feel strongly, but I, I talked to Sharon and I talked to Gail, and they thought that fiscal year-based appointments were better, mm -hmm. and it would also be smarter for the board's sake to do it well in advance. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if you're going to hire someone, if you're not going to renew someone, right. you're going to want to give the new person at least three months' notice, so they might probably want to over sure. that. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, at my uh, at my suggestion, they agreed to separate the treasurer and the collector, and list it as two different jobs that could be combined with the uh, approval of the board of select. And that just gives us future flexibility okay. should we need it. Okay. Yep. yep. And it also uh, they chose to list the town clerk. I I didn't like it at first, but I don't see any harm in it. Mm -hmm. So they added the town clerk. Mm -hmm. We're almost done. Um, the last part is the budget, and there's, there's not any real significant changes. There's a little one here where it's a little bit of a poke to the school department. They've been getting later and later every year and turning the budget over to me. Uh, yeah. Last year was the middle of February. Mm -hmm. um, this gives them a February 1st deadline. Um, you know, historically, February 1st has always been easy to meet, but in the last few years, not so much. Mm -hmm. And, you know, nature abhors a vacuum. You give them time, they're going to take it. Any mm -hmm. one of us would do the same thing. Uh, the point is, FinCom, by charter, I have to turn a budget over to FinCom by March 1st. Mm -hmm. But in practice, 
they want to start discussing it by March 1st at the latest, right. and usually in February, so they need it a week or two in advance. Mm -hmm. So they've asked for it in the middle of February. We need to have it from the school committee mm -hmm. in, in February 1st. Yeah. That wouldn't work this year the way they've set up the calendar. They'll just have to rearrange it next year. It's, it's a matter of one to two weeks. Right. I, I think they can do it. And I've, I've told about it, John. About it. Um, I don't think there's anything else. There's kind of a nuance in here that the town council and I talked about. The way the charter is written, the school committee budget request has to be included in the town manager's budget, mm -hmm. but not fully funded. It's a bit of a nuance, but when you think of it, superintendent has a budget, school committee has a budget, it may or may not be the same, and then they turn it over to the town manager. Um, for three years in a row, at least, maybe four, the town manager has cut the budget. I don't think you'd want the town manager to decide how to cut the budget. Just say it's 300,000, it's 600,000 less. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense to me to pass along the full school committee budget to the finance committee as mm -hmm. they voted it, with the understanding that in order to balance the budget the way you told me, it has to be 600,000 less or whatever the number is. So we discussed this and didn't like the language perfectly, but I said it works, it's okay. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone understands the intention. Um, would it be better if the school committee voted a balanced budget? Yes. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. They used to. <laughs> Yes, they it would be nice if they would. Mm -hmm. It would be better to vote a balanced budget and then vote a second one that says, this is really the budget we need. Right. And make sure FinCom got it. But the fact is, that's not the what they're doing. And we have to be flexible. We used to get balanced budgets every year. Pat did. Yeah. yeah. It was yes, nice. Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. and, but to John's credit, in his budget, he clearly explains all this. So it's not balanced, but he says, this budget is 485000 over what FinCom told us we should have and here's why at least he spells it out it's, it's not Some, a secret. somewhere in the massive volume yes well. it's spelled out <laughs> yes <laughs> where's waldo <laughs> um, Ooh. well i mean you know well here's that's the table. A, that's a discussion <laughs> for another day right. yes the over under on when you'll actually find the budget in the budget <laughs> um the budget message here's where you have the table of organization mm -hmm. so that's where it appears okay. um Nothing much in, in here. Um, <laughs> Capital Improvements Program, Bill Brown said that uh, this, this used to be D down here. In theory, the town manager for all these years has supposed to be, or should have been giving an estimated annual cost of operating and maintaining each capital improvement, and that's never been done. No. So, and Bill Brown said, even I don't want that. <laughs> it's not So we'll put it in, you may yeah. give that it's a, if it's helpful. Where it is helpful is something new that you're going to do, mm -hmm. a new building. What is the new building going to cost operating? That's a very that's important fair. part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it a new piece of equipment that's completely different from anything we've had, and there's going to be an annual cost? To it? Yes. That's important enough. If there's, yes, if it's going to if it's going to bump the operating budget, right. we should know what that is at the point in time that you're discussing yeah. whether you're going to acquire that or not. So here's the section which he just did this. At 12:50 a.m. last night, so I haven't had a chance to talk. He struck to it all. He struck. Uh, he struck that entirely. Uh, okay. I don't know. I so, couldn't, so I couldn't say why. What governs the signing of warrants in the absence of that language? I don't know because I was surprised because I like the last section which said that oh, the the, we, we can get do to do it, it in yeah. the case of a vacancy. <laughs> but so I'm going to have to ask him. Okay, absent this, what do we do? <laughs> mm. I don't know the answer. Mm. That was a bit of a surprise. I think he just leaned on his keyboard or something. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> that's where he fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's quite possible. Um, definitions, well, well, we'll get to that. He's put in a severability clause, much like the uh, zoning bylaw card. He likes the severability um, clauses. Mm -hmm. he, he doesn't yeah. like this paragraph at all, but I told him, too bad, we're going to keep it. Mm. It allows the town clerk to do edits, edits, um, you know, edits mm -hmm. without meaning. So, for yeah. instance, today they asked me last night to change all the 8 1s to 8.1s. That took me a long time. <laughs> I really shouldn't have been doing it. No, well, I was going to say, why were you doing that? I was on the phone at the time. Should, so should okay. you be doing that? Yeah. Well, <laughs> mm. I was on the phone. <laughs> um, let's see. Computation of time was a bit of a hot topic. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, because it's defined as when town hall is open for general yeah. public business, yes. which is four days a week now. No. Yep. Did they go through and thoroughly 
cleanse this days and define it as business days? And is it all consistent? I think now? so, but okay. I can't promise that. They, right. I, I've asked them to take another look Why at eight. Why can't we just do business days or all days? Why do we have to have a difference if it's seven or less yeah. and over? Like, I just I don't make it consistent. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. Honestly. <laughs> Don't make it complicated. Um, yep. I asked the Charter Committee last night to take another hard look at definitions. I, you know, they agreed last night to delete one or two of them in addition to what you see. Here's the business day definition for what it's worth. Um, this, is, this definition section is very different than the uh, zoning bylaw. There's very few things defined. Right. I was able to wean them off at uh, Ray's suggestion in the zoning bylaw. Don't put anything important in the definition that should be in none of the sections. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you're going to say something important, put it in the section. Whereas in the past, a lot of the stuff that was pretty important was only in the definition. Oh. <laughs> so now definitions are just things you might not understand, you know, or someone might need to use as a reference. Um, we couldn't actually find any reference in the document to ex officio, so that might go. <laughs> I think it used to refer to the moderator in some capacity. Mm -hmm. I don't know why we needed to define the library, but they seem to want to keep that in there. What the library needs to be defined? Yeah, in case we open a branch. Um, this is where a lot of discussion last night was on majority vote. And, and the way they left it was, let's not define it. Let's put it in the section it belongs. So under town meeting, it's going to very clearly state a majority vote of town meeting is, is the majority of the quorum plus that's present. And there's still an open discussion as to next week as to what they'll do on the rest. They've talked about holding elected boards to a higher standard, the current one, and having appointed maybe relaxed so that if a quorum shows up, it's a majority of the quorum. I think they'll probably not change anything, but there's, a, there's different opinions on the, on the group on that. I, I think they... Even with appointed boards, though, they could be making substantial absolutely. decisions. Yeah, that, I, 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 don't, say, I, don't, I, I don't think that that's a good... But in some cases, state a good idea law would take all. precedence. So for CPDC and ZBA, it doesn't yeah. matter what the charter's going to say. They have their mm -hmm. own rules. Okay. But you're right. <clears throat> yeah, but you know, the board's appointed for a reason. You want mm -hmm. all members to weigh in on something that could be substantial. Mm. Um, and they struck a lot of stuff at the end that just wasn't necessary. They, they do have a little bit of a description here of um, the boards and committees instead of, okay. Ray said, multiple member Ooh. bodies sounds like science fiction. Take that out. Yeah. <laughs> 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 sounds like the Hydra. <laughs> And then um, here's another special act um, dealing with elections. There's two in Section 8. One is elections. Mm -hmm. um, and th again, this change here is, is enormously minor. <laughs> right here, it's just this section. And then um, mm. recall procedures was, again, a very small change. It was the idea that they don't want to be able to recall someone that's less than three months in office. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, know. that's standard. Yep. The, uh, one more section. Removal of appointees. That's the yeah, that's, this is a good one. It is good. Where is this uh, one? 813, 813, which should be on around page 38. I might have yep. put it in your packet. Center. 38. Because yep. I don't know okay. that you have the version yeah, electronically. We have you looks should like have it. in tonight's packet, though. Yeah. It looks like it right here, yeah. Mm -hmm. But you're going to send us an electronic version. I'll send you an electronic version of whole thing. Yeah, but this looks the same as that. Yeah, this looks okay, the yeah, same. Okay, yeah, tonight's handout should be accurate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, this was an interesting discussion. Um, you can see the old language, may remove for just cause, or for cause. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty high bar. Um, they're willing to relax that completely. There's three ways it can happen. The appointing authority by majority vote Ooh. may do it. Then there's a process. The board or committee that the person is on may by majority vote ask the appointing authority to do it. Or a hundred or more voters may ask for it to happen. Mm -hmm. And the thinking well. is, <laughs> that's kind of a higher litmus test as you go down. Well, if the appointing authority won't do it, the board can at least request it. Well, if they won't do it, well, voters can always see a problem. Mm -hmm. So they like the idea of having three avenues. One would hope the appointing authority would generally be the one to do this if something is necessary. So let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Are you saying that if somebody comes in with a petition signed by a hundred voters 
we must remove somebody? No, you, you must, must have a hearing. hearing. You have must a have hearing. a process. So right. then Consider. down below yeah. explains what you do. Mm -hmm. So you go through a public hearing, and ultimately it's the appointing authority's decision whether to remove or not. So the 100 just forces the appointing authority to uh, take the, some the action on it, on a hearing. Right. But take action, I guess, make a decision That'll be on the, the removal or not. Well, it doesn't, it forces you to have a hearing if you're the appointing authority. You can actually take no action, which in effect is right. we're not going to do anything. Mm -hmm. But you have to have heard it. You have to have listened to all the sides, come to your own conclusion, which could be mm -hmm. we take no action. In other okay. Words, we're not removing someone. This will be a very seldom if ever used section, but it's good to have yeah, it. Yeah, I would assume mm -hmm. that. Yeah, and they, and they had a long discussion, a pretty spirited one about this, mm -hmm. and they, they realized that hopefully you never use this, yeah. but if you need it, you need it. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like a plunger, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so good. We don't need and these transitional all. provisions. We, we got rid of the 25 year old right. transition. Right, we, we transitioned. Oh, wow. So. And I thought I had, there's the table of organization. I thought they had agreed to get rid of the index, which has to be done by hand. Last night they said, we'll vote on that next week. Oh. Oh, I, I said, Isn't that a function of Word? Current staff is going to be paid to do this. No. Yeah. Word does no. that, doesn't it? If you no. want to volunteer to do it, go ahead. So we, the, the one thing that we do need to do is when we post the official version, it needs to be certified. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I, I know there have been times I've gone online and yep. whatever version we have is not searchable, that's not a good so option. A PDF or a Word? Usually we like to post PDFs, but. But you can still search PDFs, yeah. so it just needs to be a searchable PDF. That's exactly. All. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think you'd want to make it. You don't want it, PDF, you don't you want want it to, to be, be a word. <laughs> Generally not. Because no, then, then cutting, paste, cut, tight cut and paste yeah. becomes a new <laughs> method of, of. Well, you can't. It's hard to cut and paste out of PDFs. You, you well, if it's searchable, you can, you can also do cut, copy, paste. Out the of whole it. thing, though. What? I don't think you can pull out paragraphs. I've tried. Um, it depends. I, it can depends on the words. version. It depends yeah, on the version. I've got a conver uh, converter to DocX. My Mac doesn't. Hmm. But no, it depends. No, I've, you I've show off. To, <laughs> I've done it with PCs you too. Apple knows so. you. <laughs> yeah. I love my Mac. So. It's, it's kind of hard to get the sense of this because it's so so much bold and cross out. But I've actually, and this is not real bold and cross out. This is by hand, just so nothing mm -hmm. bad happens. So it took a long time. When you actually work it into the new version it looks really nice yeah. it's really Good. consistent mm -hmm. it's really sleek I can say it, 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 nice I can job. tell it's very streamlined when, yeah. you, when you, you really tell, look at all you this. Can tell yeah. there's two a lot sections of stuff got more stuff got in there for a reason but a lot but of stuff. so much more was yeah. taken yeah. out yeah. yeah yeah so tell me we'll get a version that has all the strikeouts of the original you know, we haven't we haven't thought about that I, yeah. I like and, and that then maybe one clean version yeah I don't know because you're gonna get a translation cross out of this for town meeting as a separate handout yes you can need mm -hmm. both. It's not been yeah. so massively rearranged that you can't understand the bold and cross. Right. The, the big question with all this paper is so do we much. still have a town forest? <laughs> 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 this is overwhelming. Yes, because we don't allow logging, do we? Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I apologize for the length, but I thought it was important mm -hmm. to really go through the whole thing because well, it is going to be yeah. loaded please, shortly. Please convey our thanks. It. It's yes. a lot of good work. It yeah. is a lot of good work. It's hard. Boom. What is that? The phone. Keeps talking. Somebody's no, kicking. Must be raining out. I don't know. It, I, it it don't, I don't think it's <laughs> actually no, it's somebody kicking, huh? kicking it. It just My does yeah, make noise. If so there's anything we've spots. just discussed that yeah. you want to uh, make a suggestion as individuals or as a board, you can make a motion now. Um, I would suggest you do it before next Monday if you can. Because How it's are possible. We do that without How can we do that if you, you haven't not. given us the, the, the electronic version? Yeah. If there's anything right now you saw that you feel strongly about, though, you should say so. Well, I, you know, I do, but, you know, and I hear why, what my, why Marcy wants to wait for John, and I yeah. get that. Right. That actually and, and makes you can sense. And do that because let's, let's say in the best case they, they vote a final version on Monday and it goes to town council. They are going to have another meeting to review yeah. what town council's done, at which point they could also entertain. Yeah, they got another month to close the warrant. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. So Thanksgiving's in there somewhere. We want to yeah. get Ray that day. Why? Why? <laughs> <laughs> At least the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> Two hours. He gets triple time, that's why. <laughs> you know, if, if you're meeting November 18th. I should put it on that agenda then. Mm -hmm. Done. Yes. Okay. So yeah. Yes. Have Let's do that. That's Absolutely. perfect. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's all. Wait a minute. We didn't talk about permanent building committee? Or the oh. January oh. warrant? Oh, is oh. this. That was part of the you know, chat I, review, wasn't I it? I didn't really. I don't know if I bothered to put it in here, um, but I'll give you an update. 
Um, at November Start Town somewhere. meeting, you're going to hear a bylaw committee update. Mm -hmm. They have suggested language, I think. They haven't voted it yet, but they've suggested mm -hmm. language on a bylaw committee. They'll vote in another week or two on a building committee. Um, they're still at odds with the schools over some issues. Uh, I, I agree with the schools. If you're going to get MSBA funding, you better well build your building committee in order to get it. Mm -hmm. The bylaw committee doesn't really seem to care. Oh, oh come on. We'll hopefully work really? that out. Really? Yeah. Um, otherwise, they have um, assented to uh, the wishes of John and I in large measure. They originally wanted any capital item, 350000 or more, to go to the building committee no matter what it was. Even a roof. Even yeah. a roof. Mm. And I said, no, that doesn't work. Make it $2 million, and they eventually agreed to $2 million. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the spirit of a building committee. It's something right. big. It's something big. It could be a repair. It could be something new. But it's not putting a roof on a school. Right. You know, we're spending 825000 this year on one of the school roofs. You yeah. want a building committee to no. tell you that? Mm -hmm. I didn't think so. But the, the bylaw committee took FinCom's advice quite seriously and doesn't appreciate the last year of three different projects finding their way to town meeting floor the way they did. Um, and the other part they wanted to make sure we all understood is the $2 million includes preliminary design studies where the total project is reasonably expected to be $2 million or more. That's fair. Mm -hmm. Which is sometimes a little hard to know, but mm -hmm. you pretty much right. know. Right. It's usually kind of 15% to get up to, what, 25 So, yeah. you know, in the past, and this is true on both school and towns, think of the library. Mm -hmm. The library came for 50000 I think, uh, yeah. many years ago. Hey, there's a grant out there. We'd like to design okay. something. Okay, here's fifty thousand. Go away. All of a sudden, here it is. We got a five million dollar grant. Now we need a library, mm -hmm. uh, and they want to avoid that. They want to make sure that you really think through the entire thing. Um, where the FinCom is going to have a little bit of an issue is it's cutting into their territory a little in terms of sponsoring articles at town meeting, for instance. I don't think the finance committee is going to be too keen on that, but we'll we'll have to just discuss that. So this is intended to be one of the articles at January town meeting, as it's presented right now. Um, I, is the substance of what they recommended to have like a, a core group of uh, sitting experts who are non non specific in yes. function yeah. and interest? Uh, no specific. Well, from a group of specific like architects in general, engineers in general, finance people group, in general. Then then you by whichever yeah group has come asking for a add project. library people, but not to constitute a majority. Right. That'll skew the vote of the right. committee. Right. And they understand there's at least one building committee in progress, the library building committee, and they said, how's it working? I said, pretty well. Good. So they'll probably just grandfather that and not mess with it. And I said, yeah, that's so a great idea. Yeah. So Hard one. When will this, so let's think about this in terms of. Well, in, in theory, if this passes January town meeting, the attorney general might approve it by March, April. Uh, before could we have be, to close the warrant? Could that be a bylaw kind of like, in Reading yeah. before April town meeting. Okay, so let's think about that in terms of the 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 working group that's yeah. not currently working at the school. And, and, you know, Dan and I are in the middle of that working group. It isn't a, it isn't a public environment. However, mm -hmm. they've chosen to do that, which yeah. I thought was smart. Yep. Um, <coughs> so, will the permanent building committee step in on this? I would say yes. I don't know if John and I have specifically talked about this. He, he and I have very much worked on the language they proposed together, and so he well understands it, and he understands the timing. Well, but the, that group has really talked about that issue. That group has no budget yet. I think at some at some point where there's a specific plan that and fleshes itself, in a, in a you know back of the envelope estimate, then it probably will have to. But the earliest opportunity in. you'd have for that January town meeting. I don't see how. Okay. I mean, then this this bylaw will come in faster if approved. It seems, it seems to. Yeah. Do you think that that'll actually happen? I mean, will, will that working group petition uh, town meeting for money on that kind of a turnaround? I without no. I have to be honest with you. I can't no. imagine town meeting being asked to approve a building committee and agreeing to do that on no. the same night. Right. No. Mm -hmm. not, I don't see them being ready by January. I, I guess what I'm saying is, I and I'm just trying to understand this in the yeah. On a, on a timeline, um, because that committee already has its second meeting set. Yeah. Um, they have no budget. Um, 
they'll quickly, that committee will quickly get to the place where it needs to analyze yeah. um, some, I won't call it, I'll call it back of the envelope estimates at various schools as one of the options, for example. Mm -hmm. They have nothing else to work with except what was there with the last committee. And so, you know, and that was put up on the wall, but mm -hmm. it's like to what end? You only have two or three people from that committee that have revisited it. Why would you bring back, you know, all the architectural suggestions and costs mm -hmm. and all that as the thing that you're going to use the process downstream? I mean, you know, I, I don't mean to step in and rain on anyone's parade, but it seems like as, as members of the group, you ought to bring the suggested bylaw to the group, make sure they see it. Yeah. So should John. Well, uh, um, we definitely need to. And do the reason, that. I mean, and this is the reason I'm bringing it up because yeah, I think yeah. it's, I think it's germane to what's going on over Absolutely. there. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason it, it hasn't come to this yet is because John and I made our comments in I'm going to say September, I think maybe mm -hmm. August. Uh, the bylaw committee just hasn't had time to meet or hasn't had a reason to meet. They did meet in order to vote the November town meeting warrants. I brought this up. They didn't want to discuss it. I wouldn't let them leave. They finally agreed. Yeah. to discuss it and vote it. They discussed it that night quite extensively um, and are going to vote on it at their next meeting, which is next week. It's before the town meeting. To so it's not going to get on this time. I mean, all due no. respect, this should have been done for fall town meeting. Yeah. yeah. There's no excuse. Get around well, it. so, they it's, so it's going to be the January warrant. meeting. So it, the plan is it's a Warren article in January. Um, once they vote to approve a final version, so to speak, subject to town council, I think that's the fair version to bring to the working group because until then it's just work in progress. You don't know whether. So the point is, you have to get all of this done. Yeah. The attorney general has to approve it, and so when you think about that in terms of that particular committee, and I and I and I only bring this committee up. I mean, obviously, practical. We're there, and it's a it's a it's something to think about. Um, I don't see how you're going to get it into April time. Um, well, you're going to get, uh, let's say the, the bylaw is in good form. It's passed by January town mm -hmm. meeting. The attorney general is generally 60 days, but maybe 90. That's mm -hmm. early April at the latest. There's now a bylaw. It's now you have question. to staff a committee. It's an open question on how does that impact the working group. I don't know the answer. I don't. Well, know. I don't see how you could. So let's just say, for example, I mean, you had one suggestion that was a 25 or 30 million dollar building right okay mm -hmm. um, town meeting rejected that so let's say this committee goes down another path and that turns into five schools of two million dollars a piece and you know so let's say it's half that amount of money with a whole different approach just yeah. say yeah. Um, every one of those is going to fall under the auspices of the mm -hmm. new building committee yeah. which to, to me, the spirit of the bylaw is, even if they didn't, is you're talking the about aggregate. this is the problem. Yeah. It's the right. aggregate. Mm -hmm. So if that bylaw existed today, it doesn't mean you can't have a working group, but it means there would be a building committee that would deal with this formally. And wouldn't the building committee want to send <coughs> two members like the board of selectmen did, you know, to, to just listen in and see what, you know, what's going on? And well, the building committee may or may not care that there's a working group. By bylaw, they don't have to care. Of course they don't have to care. I mean, they might be interested in the sake of community spirit, but, but I guess what I'm saying to you is... doesn't have to be a working group is the point. The point, the, the, the practical point is the likelihood of anything going on with that project yeah. before next fall's town meeting is right. highly unlikely. Right, right. Based on what not on anything other than what I just heard here tonight about, yeah. About the but would anything happen? And I'm not saying that's that bad. I'm just saying that. Right. I'm, I'm guessing that's not the anticipation. Right. Uh, when is your next meeting? Next week. Thirteenth. Yeah. I think I think the chart, uh, bylaw committee will have voted before then. So I would hate to see this working group waste its time. Oh. In any way. 
Have you talked this over with John at all? Like, wh how would this play together? I think this definitely has an impact on Not a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, are, we, are they reinventing? Are, are we doing work in van here if they're going to just go down? You know, that that's a fair topic for the group to have. I, I, I don't think so, but my opinion doesn't really matter. It's actually the 12th, sorry, Wednesday the 12th. I think they're meeting, oh, that might be the night they're meeting. That's an 7 p.m. at the uh, No, I high think school. they're meeting the week before, first week in November. It's yeah, a very action-packed week. <laughs> it's right in the middle of town meeting. Yeah, the bylaw committee is definitely meeting before then. It, it's a fair question. I, I, I'd hate to see mm -hmm. effort misdirected or a problem that we can all see right now happen down the road yeah. that could have been prevented. I, that's really what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. That's the reason I even yeah. brought it up. Yeah. I, you know, mm -hmm. as I listen to this, it's like, whoa! I haven't had there's a chain exact, reaction here. No, that's I mean, I haven't yeah. had this exact discussion with John, other than he's aware of all the things we just talked about, but we haven't discussed. Well, what do we do? You know, it's really his working group. Mm -hmm. I don't see decision. that being uh, well. It's actually, the school committees this time. I think. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I don't know if a big group wants to kick this around. I don't see any profit to doing that. I think it I should know. be a or executive group that's running school committee people if John, we if we brought this you, uh, I mean I, I do think we do need to consult with um, the two school committee members yeah. and yeah. John and yeah. you yeah. probably mm -hmm. I mean maybe uh, like offline the yeah. six of us should probably have that discussion to play this from Isn't a practical standpoint chair and vice chair of schools yes it's, okay. it's well, Jane Borowski no, and the okay. Chuck it's Jean and Chuck, Jean and Chuck? Okay. Yeah. so the chairman is not is not involved mm. right um, I'll ask John's out of town, but I'll ask him uh, next week. Yeah, I just think we should have that discussion. If we yeah. try to open that discussion with 21 people, many of which have never, this is their first nighttime yeah. government role ever. Yeah. Uh, you know, right. I mean, it, you it, don't want to turn people out. I, I, I to don't being, want to do that. Being no. yeah. participating and, right and some of these people might this actually. This is a round two, hmm. right, for a, a, a working group. So there already was a working group. The first time around for the early Correct. childhood. So, and the working group can, actually round three can be created oh, in such three? a way that it's helpful Movement Street. for this process. Uh, oh, yeah. But it could also, yeah, smash right into the. Well, that's what I that's what I see happening based on yeah. what I heard at the last meeting. Okay. Um, I could see, you know. Yeah, I don't think Tommy is going to suffer any can, uh, more. In, can we close this one out? And yeah. I think there's an action item, which is to set up I'm this sorry, thing. I'm sorry, sure. I didn't need to take this yeah. too far downstream. Yeah. I, you know. but I, I think I think it's good. I think it's glad. Yeah. It's a good thing that we talked about it. It is. We got the next steps set. Uh, did you say anything um, more about that uh, special town meeting warrant? Um, yes. No. Is there anything else? There, there is a couple financial items that might be on for the schools, but nothing of uh, unusual consequence. So shall we? So then, move to uh, I think we would move to minutes. Yes. All right. Uh, regarding October 14th, move the board of selectmen approve the minutes of October 14th, 2014, as amended. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor? Okay. Move the board of selectmen approve the minutes of October 20th, 2014, as amended. Second. All those in favor? And we can do this if there's no changes in open session, Bob, on the yep. move the Board of Selectmen to approve the executive session minutes of October 14th, 2014, as written. Second. Second. Uh, discussion, any, any changes to that? Mm, no, I, I don't think we can really in this meeting. No, this. but if no, we but had changes, we, then oh, yeah. we wouldn't vote it. We wouldn't vote it. We right. can just table it. So it's okay? Okay. This is a roll call, though, right? Yeah. It is. It yeah. is a roll call, right. So. John? Yes. 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 I do. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. So that covers us, right? Yes. Uh, motion mm -hmm. to adjourn. Thank, Thank you. Second. Thank you for serving. All those in favor? <laughs> Aye. All right. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.